Hey. Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh! AJ, oh! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Feel Good Friday, August 18th. 2023, this sports program starts now. Football! It's happening. What a real barn burner last night Woo. between the Browns and the yep. Eagles. And we'll have highlights from that particular preseason game. If you did not stay up until 11-15 watching the end of it, there was some magic from Kellen yeah. Mond as he evaded a safety that looked fantastic. DTR, the backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, appears to be an absolute dog. dog. <laughs> getting a blindside block penalty early where he's throwing his body around. The players are going to love that. The Browns fans had to appreciate it. Jalen Hurts had a big-time catch, then took that ball and threw it right into the crowd. He's beloved. Ross Tucker had the night of his life on the microphones, yeah. and now we are all eyes ahead on two preseason games tonight. Yep. The Browns and the Panthers and then the Bengals and the Falcons. Ooh. We got football tomorrow. We got football Sunday. Right. Then we're back for overreaction Monday. I cannot wait for everything that's about to take place over the weekend. We can't thank you enough for joining us. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Boys, uh -oh. your two teams uh -huh. yesterday, five fights, first nine plays, yeah. second day of joint practices. Ty, what does that tell you about your boys? Well, they're scrappy and, you know, they're ready for <laughs> battle. And also, I think it probably means that they got the best of the Patriots on Wednesday and, uh, Coach Belichick probably got back in there and said, hey, that ain't happening tomorrow. Mm -mm. So you know, What do you think he said? You think he said, like, LaFleur, this guy, remember, we were letting LaFleur's team be tougher than Arthur? <laughs> you think sucks. that's what he said? I would imagine it's something like that. He was also talking about, you know, how special it is being able to walk through Lambeau and all the history that's there. So he, he doesn't want his guys getting showed up in, in a place that he adores and loves so much because it's so rich with football history. He was not going to let that happen mm -hmm. again. So probably should have known yesterday was going to be a, a little bit chippy and, and a little bit tougher for the Pack than Wednesday was. Yeah, Packers and uh, Patriots joint practicing right now. Yep. Wednesday, allegedly, the Packers just beat the shit out of the Patriots. Oh, yeah. And then yesterday, the Patriots beat the hell out of the Packers, yes. allegedly. The ball went one way one day, the other way the other day. But they're also saying Mac Jones had his greatest day as Whoa. a New England Patriot yesterday. Is that what we're being told right now? Yeah, people who have been to every single one of his practices has said that that was the greatest Mac Jones has ever played in a practice, whether that was in New England, just you know within the own team or in a joint practice. So, yeah, Mac Jones looks better than ever. I mean, we saw Jair Alexander be a top-five corner, and Kendrick Bourne was toasting him, and Mac Jones was just putting it right on the money. So I, I feel great about the Patriots. I saw right the now. one play you were referring to yeah. where he's leaning, 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 fakes like he's going out and cuts to the inside. And Jair bought the out and didn't cover him to the end. Mm -hmm. And Kendrick Bourne balls right on the money. It's a touchdown. Right you away. see Jair like – get mad about it. Mm -hmm. But also, it's training camp. These things are going to happen. Yeah. Do you think maybe there's going to be a safety there, a linebacker there? If he throws inside, do I still got him? Do I not got him? And maybe he did get beat, but for the sake of Patriots conversation, you guys look like you're a football team. Yeah, it looked great. And uh, safety would have been there, but Mac was looking left. So he, he kind of moved him with his eyes. Yeah, but like Orlovsky said, maybe he looked too, too, much. too much. Too much left. Too much. Uh, One half of the Hammer, Don. Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And you know, Hammer Don is our uh, gambling show that comes out of the Thunderdome every single day mm -hmm. from two very very, very, very good sports gamblers. Yes. Both Tone Diggs, Bubba Gumpino, Bruce Brown's a part of there. And Mitt, I think, has been chirping in a lot more than maybe in the past. He's gotten a lot more comfortable on there. Now, nobody has said Mitt is a great gambler that people will be listening to. But the Hammer Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs and Gumpy, are certainly people that you should listen to whenever they're giving their picks. Not necessarily ride with every single thing no. they say, but take their thoughts and do it. Yesterday, we handed a winner to Tone Diggs. Easy right? one. Who has started a little bit ice cold in this preseason. Mm -hmm. Literally everybody else in the studio studio was like, they're giving us the Browns plus three and a half right now. They're giving us the Browns plus three and a half in tone. Heard me say it. Mm -hmm. Heard you say it. What? Heard you say it. What? Heard AJ say it. And as he heard all of these things come out of our mouth last night, he goes, oh, give me the Eagles now. Mm -hmm. 
You lose again, Tone. What the fuck? We tried to give you a winner yesterday. Didn't we? We're not in your world, okay? Yeah. We're not full-time sports gamblers like sure. you are. No, no. And I understand you're studying the books and looking around yeah. and trying to find the angle and the edge. And preseason football is not easy to gamble on. No. We told you Browns plus three and a half. It was almost like it was literally on a football god's platter. They said, hey, Pat, you want to make your first official bet of the season? Here it is. Yep. Three and a half moved to four. Yes, it did. And it was almost eight to three. Yeah. When I predicted potentially eight to four for the end of that game, it was an ugly, boring game. I watched all the way till the end. It ended up being a tie, 18 18. Maybe the first time ever. I have no idea if that's a score of Gami or whatever the hell it is. And I don't know if preseason games count, mm -hmm. but that was one that was handed to you, Power. Are you going to maybe just stop betting preseason as a whole because of what happened and what has happened to you? Or are you still trying to find the, the laces on the ball right now? I can't stop doing it. That's for sure. So I'm going to keep doing it. Sounds I, like a problem. You know, mm -hmm. That's yeah. fine. You're allowed to have that. Um, I don't think it's no, good. As your one. employer, I would like to say, I hope you get it figured out. I hope it's not an issue. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh, that being said, still need you to do a gambling show every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought win. the Eagles, and win, yeah. since they're playing their twos, would be better than the Browns playing their threes because the Eagles, uh, you would think, would have a deeper roster because they went to the <laughs> NFC Championship versus the Browns, who are the Browns. Um, but, you know. DTR came out and did his thing. Mariota fucking stunk. Um, with, Boy. You know, yeah, it's almost time to start yeah. thinking, like, did Mari has Mariota just lost, like, the, the it? To. Sure. You know, like, there's a the Heisman. There's a certain pizzazz. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, a certain riz, as yeah, the kids exactly. call it, mm -hmm. of, like, a quarterback. You have to have it. Yep. DTR has it, it ah. appears. Now, I'm not saying DTR is going to go on to be a great NFL quarterback, and I know Marcus Mariota did a lot of things for the Tennessee Titans, yeah. and when he went to the Raiders, he had a couple things in Atlanta. It didn't work out, but now he's here with the Eagles, which we thought that system might be a good system for Marcus Mariota because yeah. he can still great. move. Seems like it's pretty quick decision-making, and you're a vet. You've seen a lot of defenses, especially in preseason games. You should be able to do your thing. He's missing throws. Man. He's got no pizzazz. No pizzazz. Marcus yeah. Mariota might be on his way out of the NFL as a whole, and Ross Tucker, who had maybe his finest performance. Yeah, I to remember that pretzel. Calling that soft pretzel, soccer talk, I yeah. mean, you name it. He yep. was. Yeah. There was even a wrestling WrestleMania promo mm -hmm. with Gunther on a sideline mm -hmm. with Grayson Waller. And also some guy from NXT was doing a little bit too much talking. Sure. Okay, don't know why that. <laughs> Grayson Waller, great talker. Let's have him do that. Mm -hmm. Gunther, incredibly... Uh, Intimidating force. Yeah, right. Huge. Let's let him do it. This other guy cut a pretty long promo. I don't know if he's from Philly or not. Nonetheless, thought it was a brilliant idea to have the WWE guys promoting WrestleMania in the middle of that preseason game. Yep. Loved it. Actually sent a text to brilliant. Hey, this mm -hmm. smart good move here. This is smart because I saw it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Russ Tucker did his thing. But he said that they were telling him, hey, you know, there's uh, maybe a quarterback competition for the backup quarterback. And Ross Tucker said, uh, with Marcus Mariota on the roster, I, I didn't, that didn't make much sense to me whenever they said it. And then as you start watching Marcus just miss and miss mm -hmm. and second guess sack in this whole thing, yep. the guy lost it. Oh, did, yeah. did quarterback kill that guy? Do you think the whole world watching him go through, like, not only getting – benched right before his baby's born, I yeah. think on his birthday, yeah. right? yep. and then disappearing from the facility whenever there was kind of a tumultuous story. Did, did he Has he lost all of his confidence, you think? That's what it looked like last night, and you were betting on that, and I couldn't have expected it, but he looked fucking bad. So bad. It's, and I don't like because I think he's a good dude. Yeah, he, He's lost it. I mean, it's it's gone, and especially because there is one coach in this league who knows how to bring the dog out of you. And that is Coach Sirianni. And if he can't do it, you got you got you got absolutely no hope left. And it's uh, you know, he had a he had a good career. Not so much a good career for the number two overall pick, but you know, a good career, I guess. But yeah, I Oh, better hope Jalen Hurts stays healthy. Yeah, well, I mean, Mc, uh, what was the guy's number? Tanner, Tanner, Tanner McKee. Yeah. There he is. He's he, balling. He, he looked like Carson Wentz a little bit in that Philadelphia yeah, yeah. Eagles jersey, the way he was throwing his body around at the end of the year or at the end of the game there. And obviously, we're the only humans that watch this entire game, I think. It was a long one. It was a terrible fucking game. Mm -hmm. But it was a game, so we're going to go ahead and watch that whole yeah. thing. They were talking to Brandon Graham on the sideline. Brandon Graham, by the way, I did not know this. Uh, he is... Philadelphia's defense of Jason Kelsey. Yes. So yes. Jason Kelsey beloved on the offensive line side. Brendan Graham's been there longer, I think, than like everybody. Fletcher the, Cox. The the stats Forever. that they were listing off Forever. about like him being like, hey, this is the guy of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Beloved by all of Philadelphia. Absolute dog on the football field. He was chit chatting about the Jalen Carter 
uh, situation. And he said, you know, there's a lot of things that happened and were said. Uh, Brennan Graham saying this too, uh, I believe Ross and the other guy. He's talking about how there's a lot of things that have happened in Jalen Carter's life and during the combine, a lot of things being said about him. He said, but this particular locker room in this particular culture is the place for guys like that. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I don't even think Jalen knows how strong he is. He, he said, I don't think Jalen even has a clue of how great he is going to be, which obviously a guy has been in the NFL a long time saying that is something you have to take very seriously. But he also wasn't talking around his greatness. He was like saying, it's an honor almost to be here. It's our job to make this guy be as great as he possibly can be, which is maybe the greatest defensive player in the NFL. Yep. That's kind of how they're referring to Jalen Carter. Then you look at old cuz that got drafted, Nolan. Nolan uh, Smith. Yeah, yeah, Nolan Smith, who got drafted a little bit later. He's flying Absurd. around. They're becoming the Bulldogs yep. in Philadelphia, but also I think they embrace that culture that you come here, you buy into our culture. Not only because it's fun, we win, mm -hmm. we compete, mm -hmm. this is the place for you. Sirianni needs a lot more credit for that type of thing about being able to, you know, keep everybody mm -hmm going in the same direction. And when you got a lot of dogs, dogs. not just Georgia Bulldogs, yeah, no, no, no. but dogs as a whole, if you can get everybody aligned, oh, what a weapon. And I feel like that is what Sirianni does, and that's kind of what Brandon Graham was chatting yeah. about last night for like five minutes on a sideline yeah, interview. He was a first-round pick in 2010 for them, so he's been there for a long, long time. And then, yeah, Nolan Smith was flying around last night. And then Jalen Carter, remember at the draft, everyone was like, who's who's the most talented player in the draft? Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter. And then the arrest happened or a charge or whatever. All good now. Arrest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got a mugshot. I've been there. Yep. Yeah, I had to yeah. go. There was a charge that happened in a parking lot to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the arrest happened immediately yeah. afterwards while they put me in the back of a van that was way too small for me as I uh, was handcuffed like this, mm -hmm. pretty intoxicated. Mm hmm trying to get my hands to the front because uh -huh. I was like, I don't know how many more times this is going to happen in my life. Let me see if I can at least do this and end up sitting on my hands. Obviously, Ooh. I'm not, not flexible at all, but sure. my ass kind of caught that yeah, entire yeah. thing. So then you're arrested. He had mugshot, yep. was arrested, placed in there in the middle of the combine. Yes. yes. So And then didn't have a good pro day workout, but everyone still said he's the most talented. And then Nicole and Sirianni's like, yeah. hey, you played with this guy? Yeah. What's he like? Well, obviously, he's... Uh, Fast, strong, dynamic. What? Yeah, but what about as a teammate? You know, what what is he like as a teammate? Will he quit when we give him money? Will you? And everybody's like, no, nah, no, nah, you just got to get him in here. Got him. Sirianni's like, cool. I hope he shows up 35 pounds yeah, every yeah. at his pro day. I assume the Eagles had their eyes on Jalen Carter from fucking day one, oh, yeah. trying to get him in the program. We're hoping he falls to 10. Well, We're hoping he falls even further. Remember, um, who's his agent? Drew. Drew yeah, came on and said, yeah. Uh, he's you think that I <laughs> yeah. don't know mm -hmm. if my client is going to get drafted? Exactly. You think that I want to send my client around so he has to relive the worst night of his life with these teams that aren't even going to have a chance to draft him? We're like, you know that? You think this is my first draft? Yeah. Is what Drew Rosenhaus said. Yeah. And now Drew's sitting back listening to the praise that's being heaped upon Jalen Carter, understanding that this is why I'm Drew Rosenhaus. But for the Eagles, a team that make it to the Super Bowl, they seemingly had a piece that's maybe like defensive player of the year candidate. Yep. That is a great play by everything they got cooking in Philly. Well, and you said it yesterday, and like I think, you know, some people just like look at how good he is and assume, but like that was a massive part of it. You know, it's like you have an established culture, they are good, and then you got a bunch of guys who played with him, who were teammates with him, who he knows and is comfortable with. So if there is any concern of, like, some off-the-field stuff, it's like, no, we got guys that are going to watch his back and make sure and kind of let him know, like, no, this is the way we do things here. So, like, it is kind of a perfect situation. Like, I don't know if you could say that if he would have went – two or three where he's going into a new room and the expectations are massive and he doesn't have anyone that, that he knows and to kind of like, you know, guide him through this this early part here where it's very important that you have people who kind of know what the expectations are. Yeah, Pac-Man talked about how it didn't matter where he went, he was going to be a player and I don't think I was talking about on the field. Like, no, uh, yeah, right. Like we're, we're talking about off yes, the field. Yeah. Yes. Now, who knows if he goes to any other locker room. I assume he ends up in any place that's good. He would have been able to buy in. But if you're picking high in the draft, normally not good. So if he ends up at a place where maybe he gets distracted and doesn't have any people that he's known since high school, like a lot of the people he has in Philadelphia, is it the same outcome? We shall see. But I do know if you're a rookie – and they don't even got you dressed for a game yeah. in the preseason. All right. This guy. We got a guy. They got a guy. Pretty damn yeah. good. This guy is a guy. Congrats to the Philadelphia Eagles seemingly getting much better. Oh, yeah. 
at a position that was a strength for them last year. Yeah. Yep. And now they even up it even more. I enjoy watching and listening to a lot of things being said during these preseason games. But, boy, these games fucking stink. Oh, they're yeah. terrible. Boy, yeah. are they bad. Yeah, they're not fun at all to watch. I mean, there are a few little things like watching Marcus Mariota – was kind of fun just because you knew oh. so much about him. And it was like, hey, maybe Mark will put it together with the Eagles. He didn't. But DTR is just unbelievable to watch. He genuinely feels like if Deshaun Watson gets hurt or if something were to happen and they weren't going to play well, they're like, why wouldn't you go to this guy DTR? Because he just makes magic happen. There was a hell of a throw. Old Cuz, one of them had uh, – Watkins, 80. Oh, yeah, had like 100 and some yards yeah. last mm -hmm. night. Hell of a night. DTR has a lot of trust in him, a lot of faith in him. There's one throw where – Watkins mm -hmm. was acting as if it was back shoulder, yeah. which I think he was expecting. DB sees, has eyes on not the ball, but on like something else. Can't track ball. And then there's a completion that happens immediately afterwards. It's like, well, in actual NFL, that ball's picked. Right? Yeah, for sure. So like, I think what everybody talent evaluation is watching is like, does this dude look like he belongs in the NFL? Mm -hmm. DTR looks like he belongs in the NFL. Yes. And if he's going to keep throwing his fucking body around afterwards now, nobody is going to recommend that to a quarterback ever. No. But what that showcases to the rest of the team, the evaluators, like, look at him. He's up on top of the screen. Bam! That's one hit. Oh, you want a little bit more? That's my guy. Ah! Ah! Dang. That's a quarterback, dude. Yeah. yeah. He gets called for a blindside block, and I don't know how many times a ref has ever uh, thrown yeah. a flag for a quarterback wanting to get a little extra. Oh, they cut it off right there. They cut it off. Fools. They cut it off. What are we doing? That's part of the video. They cut it off God again. Damn. Cut it off yeah. twice. Jeez Louise. Come on, local broadcast. Anyways, he throwing his body around with the way he's performing. Obviously, that's a clean block. That was not the penalty. Mm -hmm. The penalty was when he comes around and says, oh, you think you're still going to make the play? Right there. That mm -hmm. is where the blindside block was called. And obviously, the video cuts off immediately at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I enjoy that this DTR character has built oh, What a shot, by the yeah, way. Yeah. That's your quarterback. Good yeah. pop. So, you know, I don't want to immediately say this but if you see a guy that enjoys that much physicality is that athletic you want to have on your team find a spot for him shh, you just go ahead and slide him right to slot not that that's an easy thing to do Ooh. but it's like hey you think you can run a little bubble a couple times here yeah. you think maybe you could throw another one how about that can we add a little well, what do you think about one of these huh maybe a crack you like hitting people yeah so maybe they start finding a position for him to get on the field if i'm a browns fan i understand that we paid a guy 230 million dollars he's going to get every opportunity to play quarterback Has to. Mm -hmm. does not matter how dtr does at quarterback does not matter how the browns do nope. or how deshaun watson does deshaun watson is going to be standing in shotgun for that browns team regardless of how it goes. Mm -hmm. So if you see what you got out of this DTR guy, let's figure out a little spot to put him on the field, just like Malik Cunningham yeah. up there for the Patriots. That's what these preseason games are all about. But as you're seeking those moments and those players that you think might have a little bit of an opportunity to make it in the NFL, bad football. All over. Oh, it's everywhere. Bad football. It's gross. It is disgusting. It's disgusting. There is one game this stomach weekend I think we're both started to play at least a quarter. Okay, and that Chiefs are playing a quarter and Chiefs are playing a quarter and a half, but uh, Bills and Steelers, uh, are, they, I believe, are both playing past a quarter as well. So not joint practicing? No. So that's what we're kind of learning here. Correct, yeah. If the teams are going to joint practice, and this is why we got to keep an eye on this, none of their players are going to play in the game. Already had the reps that yep. we needed from the game against their ones, against their team in practice, on film, documented. Mm -hmm. So we don't need the preseason game. We'll use the game as a showcase for some other people who we might need to make our roster. So the Steelers and Bills not playing each other? Okay. Yep. So they're going to want to see mm -hmm. gonna see what it is. Get after it. Patriots, Packers, they're practicing together. Mm -hmm. I assume we're not going to see a lot of anybody play. Yeah, they said there's a chance Love might play, but there's a good chance that he doesn't. Then he'll just play against Seattle because they're not practicing with Seattle next week. And so. that's kind of what we got to try to predict yep. whenever we're gambling on Correct. this. Yes. He's like, all right, start putting ourselves in the coach's mentality here. Do they want to risk it with this guy? Do they need to see some stuff with this guy? Like that last game. Who knows? I think that's going to be handled so differently by a lot of different teams. How has our team looked thus far? We need our guys. How has our team looked thus far? Let's fucking bench everybody. Yeah. And we got to pick those things apart and take advantage of the books whenever we get a chance it, it, to do that. It used to be easier because it was always like, hey, the third game, that's the dress rehearsal. Guys are probably going to go to half, maybe play one drive after the half. Fourth game, no one's fucking playing. 
Um, but now, like, it's I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. It's definitely by coach. Like Sean Payton said, he's playing his guys pretty much all preseason long. I know Tomlin does too. And then there's guys like uh, Chargers. They never play anybody. McVay never plays anybody. Uh, Bengals. Zach Taylor never plays anybody. So like. Now it's not like general, like, hey, third game, we're playing everybody. Now it's more of coach-by-coach coach situation. Oh, situations are situations. They are. Bingo. And, you, you know, we just – I don't want to pivot away from deciding who's playing in games, who's not playing in games. Article just came out about Andy Reid's training camps being fucking hard. Yeah, oh. he, plays, he plays good. Sean Payton's training camp, fucking hard. Yeah. Robert Sala's training camp, fucking – There, it feels like there is a return to, like, uh, you know? Oh, yeah. I feel like football is getting its toughness back. Mm -hmm. Not not that it ever mm -hmm. was gone. But there did feel like there was a few years there. It was a turn. Much longer than we thought, where it was like data analytics. We don't want to hit. We don't want to do this. We're not having our guys play. We'll wait to the season. Now it feels like there's a, a little bit more of an old school mentality being implemented back in the NFL and in college, where it's like, hey, this is football. So I don't know what all that shit was going on with the analytics and the data, but we need our guys to hit. And it feels like all the teams that are winning are yeah. getting after it. And that's good news, I think, for the state of football mm -hmm. and for the type of football that we're going to be watching week one through week eight while we got guys ready to go as opposed to potentially trying to feel it out and figure it out on the go. Joining us now is a head coach in the NFL for his second year. Okay. Hell yeah. Last year, he goes up to beautiful Chicago, Illinois. Tries to implement his culture. It didn't work out perfectly through the season, but there was some blips of greatness that will be implemented upon. Some trades were made, and is this going to be the year that a team that is in the third largest city in America breaks through back to prominence under this man's leadership? Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. Right on. Coach Eberflus. Yeah, coach. coach, how you doing? How are we doing, fellas? You doing good? Yeah, you're in Indianapolis. You look great. Loving the city. Great to have you back in here, pal. We can feel your presence. We can feel your aura. You loving it here? Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back. Uh, you know, we had obviously joint practices the last couple of days, and uh, those are really good. You know, I always look for the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and uh, it, it was really good to uh, to, to evaluate those, and uh, certainly for our veterans and our young guys too. Okay, so we're kind of chit. We're just on the tail end of the conversation there. I don't know how much you heard, but it feels like there's much more old school mentality about football again. There was a couple years there where it was leaving. I don't know if you got a sense of that because you're probably in your own world, but it felt like there was a lot more data analytics. We're doing a lot of walkthroughs. We're not really hitting. We're going to give a little bit of a break. New CBA, everything's getting soft. And then now it feels like, hey, it feels like coaches are allowed to be tough again. And we talked to Shaq Leonard whenever you were the defensive coordinator, uh, and he said, if you're going to come to the Colts, you're going to have to fucking work pretty much. Like, you got to come in. Mm -hmm. We work here. Coach Eberflus has us flying to the ball, working. Whenever you became a head coach now and you're running the camp, was there any hesitancies of, like, how you treat training camp, how you treat your players, or is it one speed all the time for you and you just got to find the guys that fit it? Yeah, it's a combination of that. I would say that, you know, we have standards of how we operate and how we go about our business in terms of practice. And we standardize, you know, the the, the effort in which guys play, uh, the intensity in which they play, and those are all measured, you know, so we can clearly show the guys on tape um, exactly what we're looking for in practice and in the games. You know, so I'll give you an example. So for a defensive player, we want to uh, make sure that they're running to the football. And if there's a change of speed when you run to the football, that's considered a loaf uh, in our system. Um, also, if you're like, an offensive lineman, we want you to cover down the field, you know, and in practice, those guys are covering down the field 15 yards um, after every single play. So we're working the conditioning level of our players during practice, but also teaching them how to finish and how to be physical um, you know, and what we standardize uh, for each individual player. So they, it's clear cut for each guy. So that's one of the things that we've done over the course of the years to, uh, to really get that style uh, that we want to see on game day. Well, we were lucky to see your defense here in Indianapolis. Uh, and everything that was coming out of it was like, hey, we are a spitting image of our defensive coordinator. This is the expectation. This is how we play. And you created all pros 
all over yeah. that defense. So whenever you get the head coaching job, and what you just said there, you would think would be just very normal. Like, yeah, we run to the ball. We don't <laughs> slow down. Mm -hmm. We do that. But that kind of changed, right? Was there a moment where you get up to Chicago and you start thinking to yourself, like, okay, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to find our people. You know, like, was there a moment of that last year? And do you feel you've gotten to the point where it's like your locker room is has a lot more of your flavor in it as opposed to the transition phase that is always going to be difficult with a head coaching change? Yeah, I think when you're always doing the transition phase, even when we first got to uh, Indianapolis, uh, you know, and then when we first got to Chicago, there's always that transition phase where, you know, you get guys that buy in right away to this to that type of style, um, you know, and it's natural for them to do that. You know, they've been that way all all along. But there's guys that have to, it takes some time. You have to show them why, and really the reason why we do it. It's about winning. You know, it's about you know taking care of the football, taking the ball away, and playing with great effort. And, you know, that's the buy-in to it. And, you know, Ryan Poles and I, uh, you know, as we selected these players, uh, you know, the last two draft classes, which is 21 guys, and then obviously the huge class that we had in free agency this year, it's really about selecting the guys that love football and want to play that style. And uh, you can see it on tape. So th their margin for getting to where we need them to get to is not that far. And we're never going to take a guy who doesn't love football and show it on tape. Feels like it's becoming more prominent now, again, finally, mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, does this guy love ball or not? Yeah, he does. Cool. We want him in our building. There for a bit, it was like, we can teach him to love football for a yeah. while. Like analytics and stats were kind of becoming much more prevalent than like who the human is. And I think any of us that have ever been in the NFL, it's like, you need people in that locker room that are all going in the same direction. You get a couple of those guys going the other way, it ruins everything almost quickly that's why they say this guy's locker room cancer because it spreads right. let's talk about who your leader is justin fields feels like a guy right i mean this feels oh yeah this feels like oh, a yeah. guy everything he's eating fish now which i'm a big yep, fan of big. love that he's getting Amen. some fish oils in there not that i'm a dietitian or anything <laughs> but like he was one of the big time upsides last year whenever i would watch for the dumb eye he'd be wide open sprinting down the field somehow faster than everybody they say he got to work on his arm what have you seen from justin fields this year that gives you hope that maybe we don't have the first pick in the draft like we did this past season? And how do you feel about the team as a whole following Justin Fields as his leadership? Yeah, first and foremost, you know, Justin is that. He loves football. Um, and he, he's the hardest worker. Um, he's the first guy in. He's the last guy to leave. And that's what you want from your quarterback, you know, and, and he's tough. Hell you yeah. know, and how, how does a quarterback exhibit toughness? Well, he'll stand in the pocket. You know, and, and you know, he'll move around. And, you know, we all saw the dynamic runs that he has, but you know, he's got those uh, those special qualities, the it factor that you that you're looking for in a quarterback. And and we're certainly excited about his progress too. You know, he's worked his uh, his tail off here in the off season. You know, uh, working on the you know his uh, you know the mechanics, the delivery, the, the you know the, the the progressions, everything, his footwork, his platform. You know, from A to Z, he's worked on that, and he and he's progressing, um, you know, right on track for us. And we're excited to see where he goes. I uh, had a good week of practice here, and we're excited about where it's going here uh, leading up to the first game. Hey, got him a big-time weapon, too, this past yeah. offseason. Their relationship seems to be beautiful. I've seen them do interviews together, and it's like they're brothers as if. It's like the chemistry was immediate. Are you seeing the same thing with DJ's addition to the team? Yeah, no doubt. You can see that in the chemistry, really, with uh, with all the skill. You know, we do have a, a good set of tight ends now. You know, we got a good you know, receiving core and, uh, you know, a good set of backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield. So we got a good compliment, you know, to Justin uh, and putting a skill around him. And, and our scouting staff has done a great job with that. And we're excited to see where that goes. And the chemistry with him and DJ is certainly uh, was was the immediate and you can feel that. You can see that in the practices here in, in, in Indiana. So um, it's, it's continuing to develop, and we're like where it's going. Uh, Coach, and the boys have some questions, and we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day here to chat with us. Big fan from afar of the way you operate because of how all the players talk about you. You know what I mean? Like, I think that is the biggest thing for anybody. Like, how's this guy's teammates talk about him? And if he's a coach, how's this guy's players talk about him? That's how I judge everybody. Everybody that has ever talked about you that played for you loves you. So – you need to know that, but also 
you talked earlier about how you have to instill how these guys need to practice, how they need to go about doing what they do. And on those two touchdowns that Justin Fields mm -hmm. throw, obviously the internet's going to do what the internet does. Oh, way to go, Justin Fields. You threw a screen <laughs> in, a, in a little check down to the out okay. where it was touchdowns. Look at these offensive linemen, though. Like, everybody seems yeah. to just blow by the highlights of this thing. You have offensive linemen 40 yards down the field blocking. I would assume that's because of what your practice habits are, but you got to be very inspired by what you're seeing from the big dudes up front on all of these plays coach yes you know and, and we really highlight that you know that's our style right there and you can see that like, like right here in the screen pass you can see right there that you know uh, braxton jones number seven he gets a block um uh, uh number 11 mooney had a great block there um and a lot of the linemen down the field uh, uh tevis gibson right there or i'm sorry uh, uh jenkins that had a great job, a great block. So there's a lot of great blocks in that moment right there. And that's our style. And, and the guys do a great job with that, you know, and really, uh, you know, to go back with the, with the comments you start, talked about that, you know, with the players that I coach is that, you know, uh, I think so highly of those guys. And I, and I always thank them for, for the effort that they put in because our style is not for everybody and the guys that can get it done and do it the right way. They become all pros because of the effort and the, and the attention to detail that they put in and as they work as professional athletes. And those guys that buy into the system, man, they take off, and, but it's not easy. And those guys have that, that inside toughness uh, that it takes. And, and I commend all those guys, you know, all the guys that I've always that I've coached in the past, and I thank them, you know, because it's not easy. And, and it's a hard standard to uphold. And, uh, man, I'm proud of those guys for what, they, what they're able to accomplish. Yeah, well, hey, we're proud of you too, Bob. Because mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to be a hard-nosed coach in these days, you know? Because you got a lot of people that would very easily say, nah, I'm not doing this. To hell with this guy. I'm going elsewhere. You saying those who buy in will be champions pretty much. Sweet. Do you feel like you've got that with this team now? And also, my wife and I, because of how close Chicago is, like we take trips up there, and I think I've learned a lot more about Chicago. Hey, that's a blue-collar city. Like, you know, you go oh, to yeah. New York, a lot of suits. And I'm not saying there isn't suits in Chicago, but it's a lot more of a blue-collar big city. That hard-nosed right. style, I think, will be beloved there. What are your thoughts on thinking about the city, matching with the team, and do you feel like it's a perfect fit? We just need to get the results now. Yeah, I, I really I, – that's so true that this is a, a city that loves the Bears and loves football, and they're and they're an educated bunch too. Now, these fans know football. They know what it looks like, oh, yeah. and, and well, they appreciate the, the right kind of style, you know. So they appreciate the hustle, the effort, you know, the ability to run the ball. You know, obviously we ran the ball very well last year, and that's that's always been the Chicago Bear way, you know. And then uh, implementing the toughness uh, that, that it takes to play, you know, in the elements and being able to do that. So, uh, you know, we fell in love with the city and really for me, it's, it's a perfect fit, you know? So, you know, I had an opportunity maybe to, you know, to uh, look at some other places and man, this was the place for me. Um, and it was such a natural fit for, for me and, and the style that we want to, uh, you know, bring here to Chicago. I can't wait to watch your team continue to grow and mature under your leadership. I heard Anthony Richardson just went 20 for 20, 20 touchdowns against you guys, though. Uh -oh. That's what I heard, Coach. That's why I don't know if you were yelling at people, but I heard uh, – I don't know about that. Ah, I know. I was I was reading mixed reports. You know, the Colts social media team told me we won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I read a bunch of uh, other people that are maybe a little – independent and sure non-biased oh, okay. like, hey, Chicago Bears team looks real good right now <laughs> so uh, I know it's all a development but we are very happy to see you back in the city and thank you for doing the joint practices with our boys man because I think that's a big sacrifice isn't it I think like giving up a week alone to practice with another team that's not like the easiest decision to make right is it for a head coach well, I think it's you can get a lot from it. You know, you're learning a lot. So for me, you know, to take your 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 show on the road, I think is very important uh, that you understand how to do that. You know, and and uh, you know our logistics team did a great job from you know uh, getting ourselves all set up here, and then really about our players' mindset. You know, to be able to go on the road and perform. You know, we talk about that all the time. Hey, you're performing at home. You're performing on the road. It's all the same. It's about your routine and the preparation that you put in. And I think it's it's important for us. I, and I love the fact that we played 
um, and we practice at night and we're playing at night because that gives us an opportunity to work on our night games. You know, we have two Thursday games this year. We have a, a Monday night game. You know, we got, you know, we got a Sunday night game. So it's important for us to be able to work Damn. through that once we get to 48 oh, yeah. hour prep. So I think it's really good for us. And I thought the guys handled it really well. Four primetime games, coach, in your second year. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, you, I think we ought to do this. We got to give a shout out to, to Zito Perez, your producer. You oh, know, let's go. <laughs> there he is right there. Let's you go, see, look at him. He came in here rocking this dick uh, cutoff sweater mm -hmm. thing. Hasn't showered he's in a few days. Man. Just getting after <laughs> it. Yeah. You know, he's the guy. Uh, he's, he's obviously the reason you're on the show, so we're very thankful. But he's been holding it down for the Bears literally since day one. Oh, but yeah. I think that's, to your point, all of Chicago, like, is yearning for the Bears to be you know, back. Mm -hmm. And I oh, appreciate and we are. Okay. There That's every year though. Coach. Yep. I, I yep. want to let you know that is every year. And if you were to take the bears back to true prominence, God, that city of Chicago would be obnoxiously loud. Oh, my God. It would be awesome. Absurd. It would be great. And Zito would be sweating all over every microphone screaming about the bears to bear. Don. Appreciate that. Uh, Connor has some questions for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, you just kind of explained how with some players, like you want them to go through that game day routine, like the night game coming up. You want them to experience that, especially with the prime times. But how do you decide, you know, who and how long some of these guys are going to play? Because, I mean, a lot of times with the joint practices we saw last night, no real starters played. But, I mean, the first game you had, you know, Justin and the O-line and DJ and a lot of your guys out there, how do you go through that process? And does it depend on practice? Like if someone sucks in practice, are you going to say like, hey, we're going to need to see you play and strap up on uh, Saturday because we need to see more reps out of you? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's really individualized. Um, you know, certainly with your quarterback, you're never going to put him out there with uh, anybody but the first line. I mean, you know, so that's always the case that you want to do that, and you want to put the skill set around him. Um, so, you, you know, most coaches would pair that together. Um, but pretty much after that, it's going to be individualized with with the player. You know, you know what's his, his experience? You know, has he played a lot of football? Um you know, those types of things. And, and you do look at the rookies, you know, we want get, want to get rookies a lot of play time um, as much as we can in the preseason. Um, if they're going to be playing for you uh, in your rotation or, or be a starter. And uh, you certainly look at that too. And, you know, we're never afraid to play the rookies. Obviously we had the most rookie snaps in the league by a thousand last year. So, and that's going to pay dividends for us this year, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, it's always individualized for that. Season's over. And your PR guy or something comes up and say, a couple things we did this year. Okay, yeah. We had the most rookie snaps by a thousand. Pretty cool. And you're like, it felt like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew I knew it was high. I didn't know it was that much. Yeah, and that's good news though, right? That's great news, right? Kind of getting in the deep end, baptized almost. And then now the experiences are just priceless almost, I think, going into this next year. Yeah, I just think that, you know, really, and, and you know this, you being in pro football, that you see the biggest jump from year one to year two. You know, you know that first year is, is certainly hard for the rookie times. Uh, there's a lot of learning experience that you, that you go through um, as a rookie. And then once you get your feet, you know, settled, I think that the biggest jump was always in that second year, you know, uh, for, for most players. And uh, How about you? I, I've seen yeah, I think it, I think it's true for everybody. There's there's no teacher like experience. You know, when you when you have experience in a job, you know, you know, just you know, think about your first year doing your show or yeah. or your first year, you know, making a big jump in a in a change that you're doing. Um, you know, be being a, a defensive coordinator for the first year. Um, you know, back when I was at Missouri, you know, or or when I was when I even jumped to the pros, there's always a I think there's a big jump in that second year. Um, just because of the experience factor. They say whenever you get that head coaching role, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. Did you experience that at all? I know you're a veteran coach by the time you got the head coaching job, but like, was it everything that it's kind of cracked up to be about all the administrative bullshit almost that comes into your world immediately to become a uh, head coach? Did you welcome it, hate it, and is second year a lot easier for you on that part? Yeah, you know, I welcomed it. You know, I, I have a lot of uh, mentors that I, I talked to before, you know, and, and during the process of, of getting interviews for head coaching jobs and then finally getting the head coaching job. So I was, you know, I was ready for a lot of it. Um, but you do spend a lot of time, a lot of time not on football. And that's just part of the job. And you got to really do a good job of segmenting that. And you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is football. And you got to make sure that you uh, really do a good job organizing your time. But, uh, it's all part of the job.
Hey, but you got to be where your feet are too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you really do. You know, you got to make sure you're not, uh, you know, that's, that's always been the, the thing. And I, you know, I've stayed long stints at places, you know, uh, you know, seven years, you know, at the Cowboys, eight years at Missouri, you know, uh, four years at Indianapolis. So I'm a big believer in being where your feet are and really helping uh, the people and serving the people that you're working with and, uh, and just trying to make them the best you can be. Yeah. And if you take care of the little things, the big things will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> How many you got? You got? A, are you? A, are you? Obviously, you're a, a football coach, so you have all yes. of these. Because cliches are cliche for a reason. Like mm -hmm. a lot of media people, when a coach gives like a cliche answer, like back to the cliches, it's like, well, the reason why they're cliches is because they're true. Is are you? Do you have a motto for the team? Do you rely on any words whenever like you're speaking to the squad? What is your style whenever you're addressing a room full of professional athletes? Yeah, you know, it's always about you know your your behavior and your work patterns. To me, you know, it's like yes, you, know, you can say, you can say a lot of things, and that those, those are important because I think you need to say it first before you you actually you know you get to, need to see it. You need to see it first in your in your eye, your vision where you're going to go. Then I think you got to say it to yourself. But the most important part is the doing of it. You know, the execution piece and actually the doing of it. So you know what we have is all we have is on, on the practice field, and th those guys know what that our work patterns are the most important things, how you prepare and how you play in practice is how you're going to play in the games. And, and we just keep it that simple. Coach, you got anybody showing up late to meetings or anything like that? Treatment? What's that again? You got any guys showing up late to meetings or treatment or anything like that in your building? No, I mean, not, not very often, um, you know, cause I don't, I don't play with that. So it's like, uh, you know, we, uh, <laughs> We are, you know, we just have a fine schedule and the guys know that if, if they're late, they're going to get a fine. And, uh, and I tell them, Hey, if I'm late to something, I'm going to find myself. So it's everybody's held to the same standard. I think like the winning teams, somehow all those little things that potentially happen in other places don't happen, yeah. you know? And if you see some of those things happening, it's almost like an indicator, like, Oh, we're not, we are not all in here. You know what I mean? And it's like, once that starts happening, it's hard to stop, too. I appreciate your answer there. I, I don't play with that shit. That's, <laughs> I, I, because yeah, that's smart. Like, that's like professional football. You don't have to be here. You get to be here. Show up on time and respect everybody. It's like, that's not happening everywhere, though, coach. You know that. There's some real toxic shit going on in 2023 in the NFL, in professional football, that I, I, I get told stories and I'm just like, what is happening in the NFL? These people don't think they can get cut. I don't think, coach. Well, I just think it's, you know, it's, I think it's, it's easier that way because everybody's held to the same standard. There's no, there's no gray. It's just the way it is. And, and uh, I think people appreciate that, you know, cause you know, yes. when you look at a football team, there's, there's, you know, most teams are 90% of the guys are doing it the right way. And, and uh, you know, and they, and they're on time and they're working hard and they're, you know, they love the profession. And, and then there's, you know, if you let the other, you know, four or five guys, you know, muck up the whole other group, you know, that's not right. You know, so, so to me, it's like, you know, everybody's going to help be held to the same standard and it makes it easier for the coaches, makes it easier for the players. And now they can just focus on their job. They're not worried about that other, the other issues, you know, let the head coach handle that and then, and then just work from there. Yeah, let me go ahead and take money out of this guy's pocket, all right? Mm -hmm. And you guys yeah. don't. You guys keep all your money. Let's keep going. Coach, this is my first time really mm -hmm. hearing you speak uh, for a long period of time, and obviously the first time we've gotten a chat. I'm incredibly impressed. Uh, I'm excited yeah. to see what your team does, especially with you. the opportunity <laughs> that is kind of sitting on the horizon. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt, owner of the Green Bay Packers, Ty Schmidt. Yeah, Ooh. Coach, obviously at this point in the preseason, you can't do you – know, like you can't be worrying about other teams in the division. you got so much stuff going on you know, with the Bears, and, and you weren't there for the bulk of his career, but is there like a message or a feeling um, in or, and around the team now that Aaron Rodgers isn't a part of the Packers anymore? Like, hey, the division's wide open, and not just Aaron. You know, Dalvin Cook isn't with the Vikings anymore. Like, it really does seem for the first time in a long time that the NFC North kind of is up for the grab – or up for grabs. Yeah, you know, to me that's like the, the uh, you know, kind of the outside – uh, noise that's going on and 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 certainly we're aware of that you know there you know it's you know it's, it's out there for everybody to see but <laughs> and we certainly respect Aaron Rodgers competitor that he is uh but we are really focused on our on ourselves as as we always do 
um, as you have to do as a football team. We, you know, we love our acquisitions. We love all those things that we that we are building here. And uh, it's it's all about for for us is just about, hey, focusing on what we're doing and how we're doing it. You know, we're second year in our systems. So I think that's pretty cool. We can start building upon that. We got a new skill set on, you know, a new front seven, a new skill set on offense that we're going to be able to enhance those guys' skills and put those guys in position to make plays. And that's really our, where our main focus is. Uh, you know, we certainly heard that he's no longer in the NFC North. And we, <laughs> yeah, we have heard that. Yeah, that's good news. We are we are happy he's out of here, but that ain't for us to worry about. Every year we're trying to win a Super Bowl. I'm excited to see what the Bears do. I'm very pumped mm -hmm. up after chit chat with you, Eberflus. We're going to see probably a shirtless Zito throughout the season <laughs> oh, a yeah. lot more than we have in the past. Oh. Speaking of new acquisitions, Tone Diggs has the last question for you here. Yeah, Coach, you talked about the new acquisitions and the new skill set uh, in, the, in the front seven. You brought in two stud middle linebackers and then Recently, right before camp, you brought in Unique Ngakwe for, I think, on a one-year, ten million deal, ten million dollar deal to to get after the after the quarterback. It, were those places that you just you thought in your scheme and your defense that would fit best? And 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 then Unique is just were you like just like oh, there's this incredible pass rusher still out on the market. Dog. Yeah, yeah. So you know, if you look back at the history of our defense, you know, it goes back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, with Coach Dungy, and then obviously Lovey Smith here, and then you know. Uh, Rod Marinelli is one of my mentors and, and, you know, we had it in Dallas and then, you know, bringing it over here to uh, Chicago again. And, uh, you know, the, the positions that you're talking about, you know, the, the linebackers obviously are a big part of that, you know, the history of that, the hall of famers that have played those positions. And we're certainly excited about, you know, um, uh, Edmonds and, you know, and uh, Edwards for sure inside. They're both instinctual players, long players. And, uh, you know, Getting uh, Ngakwe on the outside, Yannick, you know, it's 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 important to have obviously have that edge rush, um, but we're also excited about the inside pieces, you know, the the D tackles that we have, the ones that, the ones we just signed, and like I said before, the the back end uh, is all young guys. Those are the guys that I was talking about earlier. They've they've played. You know, we got Eddie Jackson, of course, but the rest of those guys are, are young, and we're certainly excited about those guys uh, going forward. Well, good luck to everybody. Uh, I believe the internet has told us, and it's probably through a report from you, that Justin Fields will not be playing against the Indianapolis Colts this weekend. Is that because the joint practices probably don't have to see a lot of the guys? You've already got a lot of looks at that whole thing? Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. You really get, like, uh, you know, two, almost two preseason games, you know, uh, with the practices that you get. And uh, we're, we're, we're good with where he is right now. And again, we'll evaluate if he's going to play in that last game. But, uh, you know, we do like to get him some more reps, uh, you know, here going forward uh, uh, as we go. Did you guys win your first preseason game? Uh, yes. Yep. Well, we did. We did. Yeah, we did it, Coach. Ooh. So I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys just want to let us get one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because we're going to be there. On. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fun. Be if, in the, it'll be fun if we, we didn't get a lot of those last year. No, none really. No. None. We didn't get a lot of like good moments last year. Nope. <laughs> during the season. So if you want to throw us a bone, you know, old home of yours, please do what you got to do. Can't wait to watch your team. And thank you so much for the time. This has been a true joy. Yeah. Thanks for having me on guys. I appreciate it. Hey, good luck out there. Ladies and gentlemen, coach Matt Eberflu. Yeah, I really like that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's the man. Forgot all those Don't guys they to signed too. You're like, ah, this, yeah, that's, yeah, he's a good one. I had no idea what to expect. We never really even, no offense, even though, nah, I think Chicago fans won't take offense. I think they get it. I think they get Whoa. it. Yeah, I think they get it. Like last year, you guys were competing for the first pick of the draft for the entire year. Mm -hmm. yeah. A fan of Eberflus have heard a lot of great things, but it's not like, hey, let's re reach out to the Bears and see if we can get anybody on. They have enough to figure out. I don't know if they need to deal mm -hmm. with our particular program asking for anybody. So that's legit the first time I've heard him talk that much. I love that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that guy. And I like the fact that he's like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of, if you buy in, you'll be good. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody. Anytime you hear somebody say it's not for everybody, that means he has seen people that it's not for. It's like, yeah, that, well, I don't know if that guy's saying he likes me as a coach, you know, because I, I talked about how his players all basically say, we love this yeah. guy. And in his head, he probably goes, well, not everybody. You know, there's some guys that are certainly not big Eberflus fans. And the reason why, just like Jordan said, they ain't never won nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those guys aren't used to the standards, the accountability, mm -hmm. and what we expect out of them. So maybe it doesn't work for them. But if you buy in, which another year of getting to find those people 
and get that team to kind of do that, I think you should be very pumped, Zeke. I think you should be very excited about the Chicago Bears. Not that I'm saying you wouldn't be, but there's a lot of hype around the Bears. And after talking to that guy for, what, 30 minutes right there, yeah. I understand why. It feels good. I've been right trying to tell you guys since so, day one, guys. Come on. What's day one? What's day one? Two years ago. Oh, then you guys got the number one overall pick. Worst team in the NFL. <laughs> but we also beat Belichick in Gillette. Yeah, but the Colts beat the Chiefs last year. True. So, like, True. you know what I mean? What's that, pal? <laughs> At home, though. Okay, yeah. True. Yeah, I mean, the Patriots <laughs> didn't make the playoffs last year. Chiefs won the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I, I do. We I, fucked them up that bad. Yeah. Oh, true. yeah. <laughs> and I think that is, like, a true statement about the NFL, maybe not every other sport or league. The year we were 2-14 and 14 or whatever, yep. there was nine one-score games yep. that we lost. So if you win seven of those, more of those – I mean, we're a nine and seven football team. We're in the playoffs there. probably yeah. without Peyton Manning, yeah. with Kurt, uh, Curtis Painter, Kerry Collins, Dan Orlovsky at quarterback. Yikes! If that ball just happens to bounce into one of our corners' hands, mm -hmm. we're in there. We win that game seven more times. Instead, we're number one overall pick. We get Andrew Luck, which pretty good little worked out give and take but that year was miserable it's like no matter how bad your team is if you go back at the end of the year and look back at the scores and at a couple plays it's like oh we could have won like five six seven more games mm -hmm. if it would have won our way yep. and that's football baby so i assume coach eberflus did that with the boys and they were like look we had number one overall pick mm -hmm. we're the worst team in the nfl we earned this for sure but also if this thing goes this way on this game, bang, there's a win. There's a win. A lot of hope, a lot of optimism going into year two. Another year in the systems. Everybody's bought in. Good for Chicago. Yeah. And it goes. Good for Chicago. It kind of goes to like what we were talking about right before, where it's like the tough kind of coaches being back in the NFL. Like, it sounds like he's one of those as well. If, if his standards, some guys aren't going to like it and – Probably with places like Belichick and, you know, Peyton Reed, like guys aren't going to like those just naturally because of how hard they are. Like it's better to have more of those because eventually the entire – This is the standard. The entire thing is going to turn hey, back sorry to about it. Yes. Standard is the standard. Sorry about it. Yeah, we're trying to win here. Yeah. yeah we're not mm -hmm. just trying to have a good time. Although McVay, he was able to win a Super Bowl as being yeah. a pretty player-friendly coach. True. You know, and everybody says Bruce Arians was a player-friendly coach. It's like Bruce Arians is – he will motherfuck. He, he gets you. He will absolutely yeah. motherfuck. Not as much as maybe Belichick did with Tom Brady, but, like, all the coaches that say, like, hey, this is what we're doing seem to be the people that yep. win mm -hmm. at every level. Mm -hmm. But there's always going to be somebody that can kind of change the game. Pete Carroll yeah. is one of them who oh, just have a good time. <laughs> he is slicing and dicing this year, too. Yeah. I don't know what – effect he has on the offense going in and I don't know what film they watch of him but if he's the reason why they're the number one offense oh. because they just mimic plays that he makes and put them into their offense I am pumped about it that dude's 72 years old mm -hmm. and that was a little bit of a duck that wasn't impressive how about on the roll oh. throwback on a dime how about this one cross body oh, back of the end zone touchdown let me run a wind sprint here because maybe i didn't throw 10 touchdowns then he jumps back in the saddle boom got it touchdown Lost how about this it. one boom touchdown <laughs> how about this one boom touchdown that's what i'm talking about now Whoa. somehow that ball was thrown to the left side of the field yeah made its way all the way back to the yep. right side of the field that's pete carroll football baby yeah slider and, and we would like to let pete carroll know you're one of the most impressive homo sapiens that we have. Love them. At 72, with those heavy-ass fucking Air yep. Maxes that mm -hmm. he wears, and those incredibly sweet chinos he yep. wears, oh, yeah. with four packs of gum in his mouth, mm -hmm. being able to move, groove, pump fake, and still throw, nothing short of impressive. Good for you, Pete. Well, Keep going, Pete. Pete. You're, an, you're an inspiration, Pete. It was 95 degrees. They were under heat advisory that day. Bro, I, listen, I'm watching on. it. As I start watching the beginning of that video, I'm like, oh, yeah, Pete can throw. Yeah, we know that. He throws the ball. And then as he's rolling out, throwing the ball back across his Excellent. body, Perfect. I'm like, that is hilarious. And when did this start? Pete's like, you know what? I'm playing quarterback uh, against the Skelly here. Yeah. I'm going to do it. They're like, Pete, are you sure we got like five quarterbacks on the roster right now? No, no, they, they don't know what I got. You know what I mean? I know what they're going to need to see. And it's like, as I'm watching, like, it would be really cool to be a head coach and just be able to be like, yeah, I'm playing backyard football against fucking mm -hmm. Seattle Seahawks yeah. defense today. And I'm going to fucking slice and dice him. And that's exactly what he did. We need more Pete Carrolls. 
okay, who are super positive. I think player friendly coaches, a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. And he has had success, but it's not as easy as that because there has to be a good balance of accountability and positivity. Yeah. Usually, guys just kind of that are super player coaches normally mean anybody can get away with anything. Usually, lose your culture, lose games when they matter. Normally, like when a big thing pops up, a loose culture is normally going to kind of rear its head in there, and then all of a sudden you're out of there. So it's not easy to be Pete Carroll. It's not easy to be a little bit of a hard-ass coach, mm -hmm. but it's not easy to win either. And I think – I don't want to be a victim of the moment. Sure. What, Ty? We'll see. I think Eber is going to win. No, I, I I think they're going to be much better, but it kind of goes back to the point you were making too. Like a Super like, Bowl, I, I, yeah, I, that's obviously not. There's only one of those every right. single year. But I think Chicago Bears fans, I understand the hype and the hope after listening to that guy speak for 30 minutes. It's like everything he does and sounds like is what winning programs do. Now, will they be able to do that? It's a much different story. Well, and it makes sense because they went 3-14 and 14 last year, so they're going to have to get better, obviously. But also – I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Jacksonville got the number one pick two years in a row. True. Yeah. I think Houston's, Houston's been up been in the up top there, yeah. two, a few mm -hmm. times in a row. So you can get worse somehow. Teams have gotten worse from being the worst in the past in the NFL in recent history. But I don't think it's going to happen with that guy. Well, and it's not the same thing as, like, Patricia and guys like that. But it goes to the point, too, where it's like if they don't do well, it's like you're, it's going to be a lot tougher to get guys to buy into that kind of, like, hey, we're working. This is hard. This isn't easy. This isn't for everybody. Like, it's you can't necessarily do that if you're getting the first pick in the draft two years in a row. Here we go. Coach Eberflus doing his thing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to a break. In hour two, we got a Jadavian Clowney signing. Oh. We got a Bakhtiari update okay. Whoa, from hey. Gutekunst, the general manager of Green Bay. What? We got a lot to talk about. So be a friend, tell a friend something nice. AJ Hawks back on the other side. Darius Butler will join us in the second hour to celebrate 20 days away from NFL Hell football. Yeah. And then Michael Lombardi joins us in the third hour to go ahead and just mix it up. Yeah, right. Can't Drop wait football. for that. Old mixer Michael Lombardi. Mm. Hell yeah. Old hail raisin Michael Lombardi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to be fresh out of a dentist appointment too, Ooh. so maybe he'll be all doped up yep. on that stuff where they remove your teeth and say things yep. that are just completely out of line. Can't oh, yeah. wait for that. Should be a great day. We appreciate the hell out of you. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. What an honor. What a dream. Being a part of game day was a joke. Being on the field for this is a joke. We continue to live the dumbest life of all time. Okay, we're all gonna be in the game tomorrow. What a time to be alive. Come to enjoy the hell out of us. We think in 2023 is over. We are live from an empty Mercedes Benz. Stadium. All the off-season workouts, all the sickness, all the puking, all the commitment, all the dedication. <laughs> we got four teams left, coach. What's the vibe of that locker room getting ready for this game? We're going to swing as hard as we can in this game, and CJ's our leader, and he's going to lead the way. Hell yeah. Yeah, oh. we're going to try to make the most dumb television on earth this evening live from this field right here in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Darius Butler, nine-year NFL vet, played at UConn. That team stinks, but they're coming oh, back. Hey, yeah. Stanford yeah. Steve here. And this man right here wearing a wolf t-shirt underneath his sport. Coach. Mm -hmm. He works for me full time. But what are you excited about this evening, Connor? I mean, Pat, like you said, I have the IQ of a goldfish, so I'm not really taking all this in strictly because there's so much. The moment is huge. You know where you make your money, and this, and this college level is the red area. Georgia number one. 120 is where Ohio State is ranked, teams. which is nuts. Max Duggan is a dog. Let Duggan cook. Right, Connor, man. good job, Vegas. Vegas. Dennis. Dennis. Hey, hey, you boys. Kirk, we say dumb stuff on the internet. You Every day. You guys yeah. be out there, Coach. <laughs> what? What? See if they can cover him. What? <laughs> In the boots. Hey, Roger, guys. Come on, you're on ESPN. How about it? How about it? Didn't say fuck, didn't say shit. <laughs> I was close, but I didn't do it. That's a win. That's Let's a go. win. Right? Oh, oh, that's a win. Look at this, man. Look at this. Hey, coach, I don't know if you headbutted one of your guys or not, but <laughs> hey, cut yourself, Shane. you are awesome. I got, I got a six year old son, man. I mean, it's a. <laughs> They're going to have to rely upon those dogs. <laughs> Kate Stover, the tight end for Yeah, number eight. He's like fourth generation farmer. Sponsored by John Deere. Yeah. Okay, and they don't just put that deer on anybody. <laughs> hey, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh,
There's going to be billionaires barking. Okay, there's going to be billionaires barking. Grown folks in khakis barking in unison. Wow. wow. So much to That's got to become a thing next year. No, I'm serious. This is supposed to go. Bro, bro, bro. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> you alright? You alright? You alright? Yeah, help him up. Help him up. Spill anything? Nope. Spilled your phone. Yeah. 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 Could have been worse. Could have been much worse. The college football playoffs are about to kick off in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh. My name is uh, Peyton Manning. That's an Ohio fucking wet dream, not just a dream. Dude. <laughs> Did you see AQ Shipley stacked on top of you on top of pole? I feel a shot coming. Sorry, Taylor. Oh, I oh, told you. you. Flipper, I, I, got you. Got got I gotta go to the bathroom. Let's go, baby. Wait a minute. Congratulations. In the encore this evening is the reigning defender. of Ohio State, J.J. Hawk, Boston Connor, Kai Schmidt, and A.J. drove down here in a Sprinter van. His son puked twice on the way down here, broke an iPad, had the windows bashed in this morning. Oh, yes. Yes. Just on the streets of Atlanta here. If Ohio State loses, would oh, you jot this down as the worst trip of all time? For no, you we love adversity, Pat. We love adversity in Ohio. In the end zone, Marvin! Oh, Marvin! You can't hear a thing. Wow. Marvin Harrison Jr. ran. How many routes, Connor? I think he had a post, then he had a corner, okay. then he had another post in the end zone. Tough to guard. Might, hey, might see though everything can be. This guy is all about ball. He is all business. All ball, all the time. Oh, 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 The fake punt in the fourth quarter is being described by a lot of people as maybe the greatest timeout in the history of college football. You know, we've had two punts faked on us this year. We are very aware and know that people are going to try to steal possessions. Connor, what quarter is it? I believe, Pat, if I check my left hand, it is the fourth quarter. Snap down, hold, the kick is Looks good. Get it, catch oh, it. Oh, yeah. And then Well, I, I would be remiss <laughs> if I didn't acknowledge your great catch under the goalpost. I want you to know when I yes. saw you make that, yes. I, thought, I thought for a second, is he going to return it? I had envisions of kick six when you <laughs> caught that ball, so don't do that to us uh, anymore. But.
every day. It is somehow this. Wow, that's phenomenal. What a game. Let's put on a great performance. It was a good time, man. From all of us to all of you, Happy New Year. Enjoy the hell out of your evening. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston Cops! Hi! How you doing? Welcome back to the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, August 18, 2023, hour two of the program starts right now. Football! Hey, it's a Feel Good Friday, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We got football all weekend. Yep. We got two games tonight. We got a bunch tomorrow. We got some games on Sunday. Woo. Then we're back for every action Monday, losing our damn minds. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor with his mullet at Ty Schmidt. We're rocking the Jack Carr. Double axes. Yeah. Yep. Winkler axes had to do it. I saw he just released some sweet ass camo hunting shirt yesterday. Yeah. Don't have that, but I said, you know what I do have? That fucking Jack Carr Winkler axe hat. I need to put that on. Do you feel smarter, tougher, and more of an assassin as soon as you put on some Jack Carr stuff? Yes, to all three. Love Jack Carr. Yeah, he's the man. Strength and honor. The fact that we have built a friendship with Jack Carr is yep. one of the things I'm most proud of from this particular program. You should Very be. cool. And that hat looks really cool on you. It's a great hat. Very comfortable as yeah, well. Normally, you'll just shield for anybody if they send a hat. Well. But you rocking the Jack Carr one, I think, is really our show doing, you know, the world a, a good thing. Letting them know that these are available right now. You can look that cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you should. Because it's not only very cool, but it is very, very comfortable. So. And when you walk around town, everybody knows, oh, that's uh, Terminal List. Yeah, exactly. Holy shit, that guy's got Winkler axes on his head. I have Don't one of his shirts on right now. Oh, my God. Look at us. We're full Jack Carr Incredibly here. comfortable. Yeah, it is good. Well, he's not going to cheap out on him. No. no, he's not a Klein. No, no he's, or a No. You know. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs, who's completely defeated on preseason gambling. Uh, that's but true. That's not true. But, well... What have you done for me lately? Yeah. That's true. That is true. We all won last night. Pretty easily. I yep. won. You won two bets. Yeah, first half money line and plus three. Can I half. see those tickets? Ty, you Absolutely. won last night. I did. Didn't you? Yep. Joining us now is a man who was sixth in voting for the Heisman at one point. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, he had zero first place votes, so he was never going to actually win the Heisman. Bull. But in the conversation, he was nominated sixth overall. They take the top five to New York. This guy got fucked. Yep. Mm -hmm. He did. He's a college football national champion. What? A Super Bowl champion. What? A Ryder Cup winner, but not a champion, but mm. currently the champion of Ohio alongside Kirk Herbstreet. Mm -hmm. A man who beat COVID numerous times. Wow. Couldn't even guess how many times. Now that we're, now that we're going back, because we're alive throughout it, all of COVID, but only show that never missed a day. Actually, we added shows. Mm -hmm. Whenever. Yep. We were the only things live, I think, mm -hmm. in the entire world for like five to six days. That's a wild thing. Who knows how many times this guy had COVID? You know why? Because he's such an Ohio fuck. He showed up on that microphone every exactly. single day. There right. were some days where he didn't talk for three hours. Yep. Yeah. It was like, oh, he probably had COVID then. So this guy might have beat COVID 15 times. We're not 100% yeah, sure. He might have all of the antibodies inside of him. Maybe they should start taking his blood to maybe cure the COVID going forward. Mm -hmm. He's a father of 10, an absolute icon, AJ Hawk. Yeah, AJ! AJ, how many times do you think you beat COVID during that run? Because cool. we weren't around you, you know, which we weren't around anybody because no. social distancing. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, rules is rules. You got to do what you got to do. But do you think maybe your blood is the thing that could beat COVID forever and maybe eliminate it and eradicate it from our entire existence? I mean, I doubt it. I, I had it uh, at least twice documented that I knew of. So Whoa. I doubt I have uh, anything special there. Now, that's one more time than he has ever openly admitted before. So yeah, we know that I that know. number is certainly four to five times yeah. that actual number there. That's right. But over there in Ohio and in Florida, they didn't believe in COVID for a lot of it. Nope, no. They kind of figured out this guy did a world tour. Remember, six vacations that's yes. right. during COVID. Yep. Hey, what? Hey, Laura. We went to the farm. We went out there. We had to see an old pal at the farm. You know, COVID didn't exist out there. They live on their own. It's okay. So one farm out in Kansas. Yeah. Hey, Lord, what's going Florida, they don't got any, right? No. no. All right. Sure. Everybody in the yeah. car. 
Yep. They don't have planes anymore. Mm -hmm. We're going to Florida for four or five weeks. <laughs> yep. We're D coming back. D.C. for his birthday. Yep, absolutely. Yep. January 6th, we're going to head over to Washington, D.C. Went up to Martha's Vineyard <laughs> with Obama. Boom, had to do it. Yep. Then went over to... Um, <laughs> pool party with he is Gates. There. Gates is... He, yep. he did do a pool party there. Yep. Those mm -hmm. sound like fun. Those do sound like fun. You'll have to let me know how those are. We're not the ones that are world travelers. I, I actually yeah. normally just stay home. It's kind of my whole thing. So we were all living vicariously through you. And now we get a chance to just talk to a guy who has defied all human science. So AJ. Yep. It's an honor. It is hey, an I honor. I like your intro. I like your intro today. They come back and you just said hi and then pause for like five It was so. good. I like that. Dude, I was, that was so, my favorite. I was so excited. You know what I mean? I was pretty pumped up because real deal, we are just 20 days. Woo! Away from NFL football, and we'll dive into this game from last night, and DTR has already won over his entire locker room coaches and fans, I would assume, with how he played in that first preseason game. Then last night, he's throwing his face literally in a fan and getting called for illegal physical altercations. A quarterback mm -hmm. in the NFL is getting a flag thrown on them for being too tough, too strong, too physical. Ooh. I love watching that. Now, with that being said, these preseason games have been tough to watch. Brutal. AJ, tough to watch. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of negativity. I hate doing that. I watched the whole fucking game, okay? I did it. Me, personally. Hell I watched the whole thing. It's impressive. Every down. Yeah. Every single down. Every I watched group. that game last night. And I thought to myself, I get to do this, you know? This is fun. Yeah. NFL football is happening. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, the conversation happening inside my brain yeah. about 30 to 50 times was like, God damn, this is fucking terrible football. Mm -hmm. We got some real bad football. But then I automatically have to see the silver lining in there. Like the playbook out of Philadelphia as they were in Philadelphia last night. I'm like, you know what, though? This means football is real close. Right. And then there's little glimpses of, like, great football. And yep. it's like, oh, it's on the horizon. Yeah. Then you see Marcus Mariota play, and you go, oh, this guy's oh, dead. Oh. Uh -oh. Hey, AJ, AJ, what? I don't I think he lost his mocks. I think he lost his moxie. <laughs> oh, I, I honestly, I think he potentially lost his confidence. I don't like that at all. Yeah, at the position where confidence is 99% of what you're doing. I mean, can you imagine? I've said it on here before. If you're a quarterback and you lose even a little bit of confidence, how do you do anything? There's so much you have to process at an instant that, yeah, I, don't, I feel for him right now. Hopefully he gets a chance in the third game to – to maybe go out there and figure some things out. An unshakable confidence is something that all great athletes have. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I mm -hmm. would assume that extends into other businesses as well for executives and actors, musicians, mm -hmm. whatever. Anything that is a scalable, climbable profession, normally those who have the most confidence are going to end up yep. at the top. Now, there are people that have no self-awareness and are very confident and fucking stink. Yep. Mm -hmm. And those people have no idea that they stink. And you got to gotta respect that as well. But confidence, just unflappable, is something that is needed because there's going to be failure. And you're going to need to be able to get past that, get over that. I think that's what, um, I think that's the ender for more careers than anything else. When people kind of start doubting themselves for the first time yeah. in their entire life, and it's like, whoa, I can't be doing this if there's any doubt at all. Because the person I'm going against, they're not doubting shit. And normally your confidence comes from how hard you work, but there's a lot of people who work their asses off and then for whatever reason can't find that confidence again whenever you're out there. It's crippling, AJ. It truly is whenever that happens. I mean, it could be. Look at like uh, – you hear golfers talk about like an old 45 year old golfer. He, like they say, he has a lot of scars, a lot of scars built up in his brain of missed putts when it truly matters, things like that. What? Lucas Glover literally just said that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you're right. He, I mean, so he said it's like Remember? now his putting is a whole new situation. It's a whole new thing, a whole new muscle memory. So the old thing wasn't even like putting anymore. So it's, it's a race from his brain. But imagine if. They outlawed that putter, and he had to go back to his old guy, the demons that might creep back in. Well, he's gone lefty then. I, yeah, I think he yeah, was just going yeah. lefty. Oh, yeah. it. Let's turn it's the other sweet. eye. Let's get the other yeah. arm. Yeah. But it's you do see it almost. And for quarterbacks, I think what you see is like uh, they don't trust. So they're like guiding it almost. And he overthrew like six guys. Like, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's those like, like, yeah, those, like, like, those overthrows, those are what scare me for sure because those are always picks usually. Yeah. And you're like, man, I don't, I don't know. Usually it just doesn't. When someone's feeling it, they're usually not overthrowing dudes. They might be a little jacked up early in the game, and he might overthrow somebody and then dial it back in, though. Yeah, but just not even thinking, though, right? Yeah. Like, that's what, like... Like, DTR. DTR looked like he had ultimate confidence. He just, he hits his back foot, boom. He lets that thing ride into tight windows, too. Like, he's not scared at all. I think that's a good way to judge how people are doing. 
by the way, and how people are going to be. Sure. Like, what's this guy's confidence? I want to know that. I watched that Steph Curry documentary called Underrated or whatever, and the coach for Dayton, Davidson. Davidson, mm -hmm. yep. The coach for Davidson went to one of his high school games. He was this undersized guy. Now, they were telling this story, like, nobody, he, his dad was in the fucking yeah. NBA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like, so they Good were telling player. this. He's six foot two. Is he ever going to? Okay, so this guy's taller than most humans. Yeah. His dad was in the NBA, and they're telling a story like, hey, Nobody had faith in this Don't guy. Know. It's like, I get that. And I, from hearing the story, I guess people weren't as excited to recruit him as maybe a six foot seven guy or a six foot eight guy. But what the Davidson coach, this older man who I think Steph is still very, very tight with, was like, this dude went like one of 30 one night. But that ball got in his hands. He was putting it right up. There was no like, hey, I am missing. I'm missing. So his thing that he saw most impressive about Steph Curry it was his takeaway was like, yeah, this dude's confidence was just unshakable. Unmatched. Like, he he missed five, six straight shots, and it was like the next time he got the ball, it was this one's going in. Yeah. And it's like that type of mentality tells a lot more of the story, I think, whenever it comes to athleticism than most people chat about. And for Marcus Mariota last night, I don't want to – I'm not, this ain't – I don't have, like, the best eyes on earth. I don't think I have the best read on earth. But when I was watching, I'm like, this guy has lost – his confidence. Yeah. This guy. Oh, yeah. Because he was in the pocket, too. Like, veteran quarterback has seen a lot of these defenses preseason. That's why these veteran quarterbacks that are playing, you know, against people that don't haven't played in the NFL before know what's coming, pretty basic, know exactly where you're going. Mm -hmm. Case Keenum, lighten it up. I mean, just absolutely. Derek Carr, yeah. lighten it up. Matt Barkley. Matt Barkley. Like, like these people are lighting up because at least they know Basically. what the other – that's a, quite an advantage to have. All of a sudden, you're like Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning yeah. because yeah. you're able to figure out what's going on defense, which is their greatest gift. And it just didn't seem like that was something that he had last night. So then you start – like, that, did quarterback ruin this guy? And is that why – is that why people don't want to do – or publicly come out and say, well, uh, they don't want to do quarterback because they're like – you see what happened, Mark Mariota? Really? Yeah. This guy. Well, I'm, I would imagine Marcus wished well. that he had some documented footage from maybe early in his career when it was going a little bit better. Not the <laughs> one season where he gets cut as he's having a baby and he's doing rehab away from the right. team and there's all kind of weird stuff happening. Go ahead. But that might be the thing that actually got him. Like, and this is a completely different situation, but when the Manti Teo untold came out after that whole situation off the field, like he just second guessed himself on, you know, on the field and he could never be actually the player that he was. And with Mariota, I think there could be a chance that, sure. you know, after Vegas, he was like, okay, I am ready. Mm -hmm. This is my time. I can be a starter in this league. And then you go back and look at some of those Atlanta losses. Like they were about to be the saints. And then he fumbled the ball on a snap and they lost. Like there were multiple Time. And they got to relive it. And then, yeah, you have to relive it. And then all of a sudden you're going to a place where there's no pressure. There's zero pressure for Mariota. It's not like, hey, we're going to need you at some point. Like if Jalen Hurts has a broken leg, they're probably still going to wheel him out there because of how good he is. So there's no pressure for Mariota to like perform at all. And even like the sacks, whatever. Him like doing the double pump fakes that we're seeing from like Stroud Trey, Trey and Richardson and Trey Lance, like – He's played in the league for damn near 10 years. That's not the stuff that you would expect from a guy like that. And that's why even going into last night, it was like, yeah, we love the Browns. But if Mariota's playing, like he should probably tear apart the you you know seconds and thirds of Cleveland. And him not doing it, like he might have just completely lost it after his time in Atlanta. Hey, Marcus, you're a, you're a great football player. Mm -hmm. You did great time. things with a football in your hand. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the hell out of you. Yeah. You need to know that. Love you, Marcus. You do need to know that. I was sad to watch, though. It yeah. was. Because I am a fan of Oos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. Uh, I, Seems like a great guy, doesn't yeah. he? Seems and like also, a really good dude. Remember him in Oregon. Like, when we got introduced to him. Oh, yeah. It oh, was. Heisman. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you almost got Heisman. <laughs> remember? Yeah. You remember? Almost. Very close. close. You were right there. I got nominated for the Hall of Fame, pal. I got zero actually go. yes votes, but I was nominated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all that counts. <laughs> Forever. They, they, I think Manti almost won the Heisman. He was like second oh, yeah. or third. Yes. Hell of a player. Hell Jeez. of a football player. What have a story. You, have you seen him now? I've actually, I don't want to say me and Manti Teo are friends, Yeah. but we DM once a month, I'd say. Like that. That's sweet. Go. Yeah. Since, you know, us watching that documentary yeah. and just being like, this guy got fucked. Dude, you yeah, yeah. Feel for him. Yeah. This feel guy, for him. 
So I sent him a message. I was like, I don't really do the DMs much on any of the platforms. I actually try to stay out of them mm -hmm. uh, because of the things that get sent to me are either like really rude or like, hey, I need this sure. or hey, I need that. So like, I just try to save myself from that. So I apologize to anybody I have not responded to in there. I don't look. I try to stay out of it. It's like to keep my life better. But after that Manti Teo documentary, I felt obligated to be like, hey, I won't let you know. Mm -hmm. Me and my friends have made some jokes mm -hmm. at your expense. Yep. What happened to you is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute Fuck. bullshit. I mean, we love them too. And like, we are so yeah. sorry yeah. that we did not know the whole story. And then mm -hmm. like he obviously responded like very kindly. I'm like, you did not ever respond to me. I'm very thankful. And now I'll send the yeah. Oh yeah. You know you send some mana. I'll be I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Hawaii with the wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll get a hey ooze, you know, a whole thing. I'm like, are me and Manti Teo friends right now? Yeah. He is yeah. properly yoked. Yeah. I, I he is fucking yoked right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna hey ooze, why don't you make a you know, let's, let's, let's end this football on, life. Let's end this sure. football life well, in yeah. a proper fashion. Well, one more yeah. season. Come uh, back here. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's going to break down a list that hit the internet yesterday. And obviously, <laughs> lists that hit the internet are always going to be enjoyable and fun, especially in the sports media world. Colin Cowherd put his uh, top 10 wide receiver quarterback combos in the NFL out last night. Mm -hmm. We put it in the group text, obviously. And boy, oh boy, Whew. there was one guy in there that was not happy with Colin Card. He thing. also happened to wear the number 20 whenever he was pick six and everybody and doing his thing. And we are 20 days away. So to celebrate the countdown and being pissed off, ladies and gentlemen, your favorite golfer, Darius Butler. Yeah, yeah, boy. Boy. What's, what's good, fella? Hey, I'm never Ooh. pissed off, man. Life is good. It's feel good Friday. I'm in a great mood. Uh, great list. Great list by Colin there. He dropped last night. Okay, let's put it up there and just start dive into it. Now, this is classic mm -hmm. sports media. You uh -huh. know, this feels like in, we are fans of Colin Cowherd. Even though there are people that absolutely despise Colin Cowherd, there's also people that love Colin Cowherd. And he's I been mean, doing he's been doing this a he long... Break the, he broke the A-Rod news, too, so that, that was big. Shout out to Don't Hard Knocks keep. and the NFL Films people <laughs> uh -huh. and the people that are attacking me for saying what the fuck about that situation who have no idea about anything. But nonetheless, we are fans of Colin Cowherd, has been doing it for right. a long time, doing it good for a long time. But this list is like straight out of the sports media, stir the pot, piss off yeah. the marks yeah, playbook pretty much. Yep. So as we go through this, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, number one. Okay, hey. You could definitely easily wow, say that. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley haven't even played <laughs> football together yet nope. in the NFL. But J Colin Coward's like, this isn't about now. This is end of the year, yep. what yep. people are going to be saying. Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, now that's won multiple Super Bowls and sure. multiple championships. Record, and yeah. They are going to break yeah. every record yeah. together that there has been and will be. Aaron and Garrett haven't played yet. Derek Carr and Chris Olave at number five. This is when people <laughs> really started going, Colin, what are we doing? Darius, mm -hmm. when you look at this list, Josh Allen, Allen, not in the top five. Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown that broke a bunch of Philadelphia records last year, not even in the top ten. What are your thoughts, and how excited are you for the NFL season, knowing that these duos are going to be out there killing defensive backs mm -hmm. all season long, yeah. D-Butt? First of all, we can start there. Everybody on this list, is, is I expect to be dominant. I expect to be great uh, next year. And I see, I see, okay, it's Colin forecasting, right? But, I mean, any list – you know, quarterback, wide receiver, quarterback, tight end, whatever. If Travis Kelsey's on the list with Patrick Mahomes, they got to be one. They got to be one. I think you can look around the league, and even the guys in the league uh, will, will say that as well. But you got him. You got Jefferson, what he's been doing with Justin Jefferson, what he's been doing with Kirk Cousins has been crazy this first three years. You got Tyreek Hill. He was on He was on track for 2K if Tua can stay healthy. I think all those guys should be up there in the top. Uh, three, four, Chase Burrow right there as well. And then all these guys who haven't even, you know, competed or had that connection in real game speed yet, put them on the list. Just not up top. Got a little fired up yesterday. You know, just a little bit fired up. Me and my guy Foxy, you saw the list. Oh, yeah. Thought it was bullshit. Once again, <laughs> uh, big fan of, of Colin. But, yeah, like you said, this is classic media. Uh, but, you know, fantastic talent on this list. But I think Kelsey Mahomes obviously at the top. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a homer, so – but I know Tua is not, you know, he's not on the field every week, so I won't put Tua. Oh, whoa, there. he's doing jujitsu. Uh, yeah, yikes. Josh, Josh Allen, Diggs even. I mean, since Diggs has come over with Josh Allen, what they've been able to do together, um, they should be higher. But, uh, I mean, I can't wait. 
I can't wait for this football season to start. Um, I'm not as anxious as you guys because I can't watch a minute of preseason football. So I don't know how you guys do it. Live, I haven't watched 60. once the live snap of preseason ball. I watched, six, I watched 60 minutes last night, <laughs> preseason football. Tough. That's it, tough. You're right. Buddy, there was a lot of motivational speeches I was giving to myself while I was watching. Like, this is football, though. It is football. Sure. We're just is. We're 21 days away from actual football. Mm -hmm. And then as the clock kept ticking, I'm like, God damn, is this the slowest preseason game mm -hmm. of all time? And Ross Tucker was doing his thing on a microphone. He was. Yeah, he so, was. like, that kind of that kind of got me through it all. And then you losing your mind in the group text also helped me as well. So you need to know that. But I appreciate do, that. do you think the way that list went together was – Tone thinks that there's a chance he did not see that list until he went live. Producer put that together. He went live. He sees it. Uh -huh. Now it's time for him to go. I don't think that's the case. Do you think there was a list presented to him? And then he was like, mm. let's go ahead and move them down to six. Mm -hmm. And let's move Trevor Lawrence no and Calvin Ridley. Came up with it. It's all calling. You think he said, no, this is the top ten. That's how you think yes. this happened? I think so. I... I, I, I... I mean, I agree. like I said, it, look, it's all, uh, they're good guys. You know, I you hope after around. the Haskins news, I, after the guys. Haskins thing, I, I assume that those lists are just put out there. Yeah. Did he yeah. say though? Hey, did he say this is how it's going to end up? Did he like say, "Hey, hey guys, don't get don't get on me. This is how the, I'm saying at the end of the season, these will be the top do." I don't know what he said today. I think he covered it a little bit on his show. We did not have the sound on. We caught the tail end of it or whatever. I'm saying that just to like say. This is what mm -hmm. Colin was thinking, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of babyface it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that 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 was the best, you know. That I was mean, it's it's been some shit. It's been a, this is the this is the time of the season. Though. It's close. You start just putting some shit out there. You start putting my guy RC, love RC, mm -hmm. love Ryan Clark. Gives a lot but. of good takes him up and love the pivot. But that shit he said earlier this week, I think that kind of got the shit going. What he said? What he said? He, we're thirsty. We don't have when to he about said it. George Pig is much more talented than Justin Jefferson, I mean, I well, mean. So you just said that you, th th you think it, that Colin Cowherd saw what Ryan Clark did, and he was like, oh, yeah, it is that time yeah, again. Yeah, let's do Hold this. My beer. I completely <laughs> just, when, when that time of year, man, where, you know, you're putting out lists. And once again, I think this is a good list, but you got to move some things around. You got to say some shit. That's going to have some conversation around it. You know, that's a part of the business. I get it. But, I mean, so it's not – this Kyle Hurley's, this isn't ridiculous. This is not, you know, the worst thing uh, anybody's put out, especially, um, you know, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Go ahead, Connor. Well, especially yeah. recent, recently, but, you know, at 11, he had Jimmy G and Henry Ruggs. He thinks that they're going to have a hell of a year. All right. AJ, AJ, what do you got for but, but there? Uh, aside from those <laughs> – Where did you see that? List, I always thought uh, that was that. – No, no. Others I, receiving votes. Yeah, there's like, like a yeah. top 12, 13. Right. Terry McLaurin was on it, but unfortunately the quarterback he picked with him was also still Dwayne Haskins. By the way, Sam Howe has been uh, announced as a starter for oh, yep. the Washington yep. Commanders, mm -hmm. formerly known – as a name yeah. that is that people want back. Not, not everybody. everybody. So. But isn't there the Stop it, Connor? It's not Stop everybody. It, I thought that NAGA was make Native Americans great again. Remember we were talking about this? <laughs> no, that it's I don't think that's what that was more of a suggestion. They <laughs> oh. haven't workshopped it yet. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Sam Howe starting for that team. That was once called a word. Yes. That there's a petition to get back, but boy, they're, not everybody's thrilled about it. No. From, from what we have been told. Anyways, uh, go ahead, AJ. Uh, are, you, are you surprised anyone that you don't see on that list? Maybe seeing who we put up there, I, I'm surprised Justin Fields, DJ Moore isn't up there with what they've done the preseason early. Like, what do you think they're going to do, uh, D, but how the Bears going to be? I mean, I do. I, I think the Bears take a step. I know a lot of people were expecting them to, you know, win oh, yeah. the division. They throw the ball down the field, D. But I know that's they, the problem everyone's saying right now. They, they have to. They're going to throw it down the field more. I think Justin Fields more than capable of throwing the ball down the field. Will he be in the MVP conversation or anything like that? No. I think we're a couple of years from that, even with that team um, around him. I know you have Flus on here, but hey, I mean, they're good. building. You know him. They're, you know Flus. I don't know him. I met I met him once, maybe twice, but uh, all his players. Uh, love, love him. Uh, he, his, his standard, you know, for defense and how they play defense. And I'm sure that'll go throughout the entire team now that he's the head coach. Um, everyone has spoke highly of that. Um, all the coaches that have coached with him, but I don't know him personally, um, like that, but, uh, great coach. I think they'll take the right steps, but I still think that Bears roster and that team is a couple years away, but I definitely think they're going in the right direction. I love Justin Fields. I think that connection will be great. I think, uh, Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown, they weren't on the list, this list, right? No. I think they should have been on the list. I mean, Anytime they were one on one last season, I mean, Jalen Hurts took full advantage uh, of those situations down the field. And for some reason, 
even the conversation around Jalen Hurts, I feel like people, you know, a lot of, some people put him up there and some people don't. Some people say, hey, man, he's propped up by the roster around him or the good receivers, great defense, great offensive line. I mean, that's what, the, that's what the front office is supposed to do. They're supposed to build around a young quarterback. But this dude has gotten better, you know, week in, week out. Every year he's gotten better. And on this very show, in the old studio, actually, Shut remember up. I picked him to go to the Super Bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but was that like yeah. a classic UConn Husky no, no, to end wagon? A, I'll, make, I'll say 10 that, teams. Yeah. Was that a Dan Orlovsky? I said, two. I said two. No Dan wagon. I said two. And my charges let me down. Patrick Mahomes, he's inevitable at this point. But uh, Chargers, Justin Herbert, let me down. Uh, but I had the Chargers and the Eagles um, in the Super Bowl last year. Well, we appreciate it. We're hoping for a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet yeah. you did, yeah. Okay. What have you done for us lately, bro? That season's gone. Okay. Yeah, New Year. Yeah, you're not, even watch, Year. you're not even watching preseason. We're all so far Not a ahead. lit. Yeah. No, we're so far ahead of you. Yeah, we know Because we're watching these preseason games. You know who's going to be starting in the XFL in two years? No. I do. <laughs> I watched them in fourth quarter, like six, seven different games yeah. this past weekend. Wait till you see what I do tomorrow. I'm watching the CFL Grey Cup yep. right in front of my eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Third, fourth quarter in like seven or eight of those games. Over and over. There's some terrible football players on some of these teams, D, but terrible. Yeah. And I, I don't want to take – we've already taken enough. Kellen Mond escaping to safety huh. numerous times and picking up the first down. How you doing? Hey, Peace. keep it moving. That was fourth quarter. That was late yeah. in that game. Yeah, late. <laughs> that really brought quite a spurt to me, though, while I was watching him. Like, oh, there's some football being played here. Huge. And I don't want to – we buried him already, and we liked him as a person. And you didn't see this because you don't watch – you don't prepare for your – you don't watch. Mariota? Yeah, you don't watch what you need. It's not good. Mariota? Yeah. Hey. Man. It's like a bummer to watch like because – Sad. We've seen him, you know, for a long yeah. time and had a lot of high hopes. He is – it was bad last night. It was, it was not good last night, but he'll get better. Sure. He'll get better. Eagles get better. To your point about Jalen, though, he's beloved over there. I mean, he is yeah. – Philadelphia has taken him quickly yeah. as this is our guy, good representative. And since day one, all he wants to do is compete and love football. Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of radiates through. And he's got hands. Ah, give me that. And then he says, where are we? We're at home. Whose ball is this? Their ball? Yeah, you know what? You're right. Fuck them. See ya. Throws, hey. it, into the, throws it into the crowd. That was Brown's ball. Yeah. That was Brown's ball. Turn. Awesome. See ya. How you doing? A lady, Love I think, it. ended up with it. I don't know if she caught it or not. He's beloved. But him and A.J. Brown, I think they broke a yardage record for the Philadelphia Eagles last night, if I was listening to the commentators right. And then him and Devontae Smith broke like a catch record last mm-hmm. year. So he broke two different Eagles records, I think, last year alone. And you're right. You never hear him. You hear, all right, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Burrow's able oh, to do his thing. Are. Justin Herbert. Josh Herbert. Allen is doing his thing. Is Kenny Pickett going to be able yeah. to? Yeah. Brock Purdy? Bro- is Brock Purdy? He's going to be healthy by it. Yeah. You never, smirk, you never hear like, Hey, another year, Jalen. Yeah, look out. You know, you you don't hear that. You're right, D. But that's that's probably our fault too. Uh, no, I think you guys you, you guys hit it when he when he makes the plays. But I mean, he was a he was two games. If he didn't miss those two games last year, I think he wins that MVP. Uh, you know, I think he lost one game in a regular season as a starter um, last year. And if you go back to his college career, obviously everybody remembers when he got benched uh, for Tua. You know, Tua was a great young player that happened some time. He sat on the, on, the, on the, stayed on the team, was a great locker room guy, went on to Oklahoma, developed tremendously under Lincoln Riley as a passer, was in the Heisman. I think he finished maybe a couple spots higher than A.J. did. Oh! 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 Fucking grab the shovel, bury nah, that nah. man! Oh, nah. that's 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 crazy. That's crazy impressive. Finish the top six, really top five, because Reggie they took it from Reggie, but give Reggie his Heisman back. But yeah. been, been a Heisman finalist at Oklahoma, um, and he was he was a he was a very very good passer um, coming out, and I think he, and you, everybody knows everyone that spoke on him, everybody that's around him talks about his work ethic, his leadership. So those are like the young guys you bet on. Like those are the things, the intangibles you bet on to get in the locker room and get better. And I think uh, he's done nothing but do that. But for some reason, it's like expect people are looking at like, oh, yeah, that's one year. Don't prop him up there just yet. But I think he's got a long road ahead of him. I think that's why the Eagles jumped up there and made him, you know, the highest paid player in the league for, you know, a few weeks until I think uh, Lamar got paid and then, you know, Herbert got paid. Great answer there. Uh, 
It's a shame, though, because AJ wasn't listening to any of it because he has a button that goes right into my right ear like Zito does and yeah. boys do. Yeah. And he said, uh, he actually said, uh, when did Jalen get drafted? That's what I thought after oh. the whole Heisman thing. Oh, you know? sure, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what Damn. AJ yeah. Wow, we get it, AJ. Well, Five yeah. overall. We know. Old, old if CB. Been, if I had a ventriloquist, a ventriloquist, I guess, that what you would call it, <laughs> I didn't, my mouth didn't move. Did yeah. my mouth move? Yeah, you said, yeah, when did you get drafted? <laughs> I saw it like American yeah. Talent. Yeah. So pissed. Run it back. How, how many I saw you doing the ear thing. I thought you were mad at Zeke, honestly, but you was a whole bit you were setting up. No. No. Not a bit. Not, not a bit. AJ. This is yeah, a real bit. deal. Definitely not a bit. That's what he, he said, though. He said, oh, he might have got more Heisman votes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Does that matter? Before he gets drafted. Fifth overall. Did he, did he get $55 million. Old CVR. As a number of well, he, he got 300 at age 24. Yeah, you're right. He, hey, yeah. shout out to Nicole Lynn too. She got shouted out by yep. uh, Quinn and Williams the yeah. other day. Yep. She's hey, getting it he, done. He's another dog. Yeah. Hey, you watch Hard Knocks. What are your thoughts? Like, obviously, we as a program are excited mm -hmm. about the Jets. Why yep. are you guys excited about the Jets? Well, we like fucking know, you know, a lot of the everything mm -hmm. that's going on over there. We're lucky mm -hmm. to be in that particular case. But that team adding Dalvin Cook and you know, Pac Man asked. I think last week to either Schefter or Rappaport about Dalvin Cook having a potential uh, Roger Goodell meeting yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. at some mm -hmm. point. And then I think AJ told me, AJ did a little research. Michael Lombardi kind of alluded to the way the contract is set up, that there might be something coming down the pipeline. We haven't heard anything about that in Rapp or Neither, Schefter yeah. said no, that All was right. not, they didn't hear anything about that. We'll ask Lombardi about that in a little bit, but let's assume Dalvin's in for the full season and Brees Hall is back as well with Garrett and Uzama and Lazard and Cobb mm -hmm. and obviously Aaron. And What do you think about the Jets hype and have you watched Hard Knocks and what is, what is your overall takeaway from the team behind closed doors? Man, so I, I was one of those weirdos that actually liked training camp as a player, even even back in college. Like, in the pro, I liked it. So hard knocks, one of those things, like, especially if it's good. And I feel like this season has been good. That's when I start really missing, kind of being in the locker room, being in those meet rooms, doing those things, like having those interactions. I think they've done a great job so far with the Jets. And that team, man, they look great on paper. But just to see how – and obviously we've known this and, and been around the league as long as we have. We know people who's been around A-Rod. But for a lot more people to see how he interact with teammates, coaches, former coaches, you know, whoever it may be, like that type of shit resonates uh, throughout the building. You can't really – it's not really something tangible that you can put a value on. But they obviously got the talent. Obviously the O-line situation got to be sorted out and figured out. Um, it is interesting to see – uh, for me, at least, more of Robert Sala. You know, it's always, you know. What are your hard, thoughts? Hard. What are your thoughts? You know, I, I, I got to see a few more episodes. I got to see a few more episodes. Oh. The thing about Ben, I, I think he, I obviously, you know, X and O's wise, defense wise, he's a great coach. That's, that's, that's stamp. But, um, you know, it, it, it's different. When you're a head coach, and especially when you have a quarterback of that stature, like an older quarterback, a, a quarterback who has the legacy that Aaron Rodgers had, you need a certain, um, I don't know. I don't know how to say it really. I don't know how to say it really. I just got to see a little bit more Coach Sala. But uh, I am a fan of Hard Knocks. I am a fan of the Jets. I do expect them to make a deep <laughs> run this year. <laughs> do you like the cut of his jib? Yeah, you like the cut of his jib. I, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. That's a I, I'm no. Not sure. I'm That's not sure what that man. means. What are you waiting to see, from, me, bud? What are you yeah, waiting well, to see? Yeah, I need a couple more episodes yeah. of Hard Knocks. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not sure. He's on the He called up the old in front of everybody. You got to be the same. You got to be. You got to be the same guy. You know every day, and, and, and you don't have to be a hard ass. You don't have to cuss everybody out. You know you obviously gotta. Um, you just gotta lead a room full of men. Like, and, and I don't know how to explain. You know what? Because oh, he was exactly reading his speech. You, you, saw him, oh. you saw him read but, that speech. Is that the, the crow and the eagle one? You saw him read the speech. Is that what happened? I mean, we. That was it. That was it. You know, we always we always got the coaches with the, with the stories and the speeches. That's cool. The quotes. I just got to see more of the guy. But what? I lo I like him. Goldberg I like him. Sure. I love the <laughs> roster. Uh, obviously, they went out and took the. I, I think this is gonna be great. Also for Zach Wilson, man. I think Zach Wilson being able to sit behind a Rod. I think he'll be now. You kind of can be in the in the cut a little bit and not really be up under that limelight. Okay. But learn just all that you hear the game that he's getting from a Rod. Just learning and getting better. And then when a Rod goes off in the sunset a year or two from now. He can hopefully take over and, and, and be that guy that people thought he was when he got mm. drafted number two. But obviously, they got a great defense. You got great weapons. You just gotta, you just gotta fix it up front. Um, you know, in front of, uh, in front of eight. I agree with what you're That's saying about Zach Wilson too. I think like, 
You know, uh, I think Jameis Winston's team described the Saints. Now, granted, the other other place had Tom Brady, Bruce Arians, Clyde Christensen in the quarterback room. Yep. When Jameis signed to the Saints, he said he's going to, like, quarterback college. Yeah, Harvard. Yeah. Harvard. He's going to quarterback yeah. Harvard, which I respect because Sean Payton, Drew oh. Brees there. But also, on the flip side, there is also some championships. You know, so that comment, and it didn't end up kind of working out no, there. Working out, yeah. But Zach Wilson getting to watch Aaron watch film, interact with his teammates, what he can say to the coach, what you can't say to the coach, let alone the decisions you're making on the field. Just, hey, here's how you be a professional quarterback, you know? That should help him. Now, if he's just going to throw it to the defense whenever he gets on the field every single time, <laughs> sure. I don't know if he can change that. Mm -hmm. And back to – go ahead. The difference there, for me at least, uh, so with Jameis and Drew, obviously, you know, it's like going to quarterback Harvard, but I feel like those were two just very different quarterback body types – throwing styles, like offense, they can fit. I feel like uh, exactly. Wilson was drafted literally to be like Aaron Rodgers. That's who everybody compared him to. Like, you know, the, the off-platform throws, the cross-body shit. So to actually see the guy that you probably wanted to be your whole life and actually be in the meet room, and, that's different. I feel like that's different. And Nathaniel Hackett, you know, being the relationship that they have with Aaron Rodgers, Nathaniel Hackett, he's a character that I didn't expect. He, he's Chew. been a bright spot of uh, – Fuck you, dude. <laughs> love that. Love that. I enjoy love whatever. It. I love when coordinators chirp the play. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that means, like, okay, every other player on the field is like, oh, wants to win just as bad yeah. as us. Here. Sweet. Wants yep. to, is in this as much as us. And speaking of coaches, Robert Sala and his brother will beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. Well, you know what careful. I mean? Like, I, I know. Oh, no smoke. Sal, no, smoke, Bob. no, you don't. Ah. It's too late now. A couple more episodes, he says. I need to see this full season of Hard Knocks before <laughs> yeah. I mm -hmm. properly judge there. And were you saying that because you say you're a defense guy, you know defense. When you're head coach, you're addressing the whole team. Whenever he said, like, I'm just going to keep it real, defense is real good. Offense was mediocre last year. Was that something that made you think, like, this guy maybe not full? Like, why? No, I what, I think that's real. And I think that's real. I think it's important for, for coaches to keep it real. And every, everybody, anybody with eyes, you know, can see that. Uh, shit, they probably said the same thing in Denver. You know, they had a great defense. The offense didn't didn't hold up. And sometimes that's the flip side. Sometimes you can't stop a nose be no defense in the quarter. And, and the offense is putting up, you know, 28, 31 points a game. So I don't, I don't mind him, you know, just keeping it real. But when I'm watching Hard Knocks, I always and I know when they edit and it's not really the the players reacting to what the coach is saying at the time. Whoa. But I kind of put myself in that seat and and and, and I'm listening to a head coach speak as a as a rookie, as a four year guy, as an eight year guy. And you know, it's it's like okay, okay, all right. But it's training camp, <laughs> you know. And so in this training camp is where it's built. You know, like you said, hey, shows built on stone. You got to build this shit on stone because oh, it's gonna yeah. be some storms. You're gonna have a Two two game losing streak, maybe a three game win streak, but that coach kind of that leader has to be the same guy in those different. He read his uh, speech. Situations. You saw it, yeah. That's what. Want to let you know. Had numerous text messages with other people as well. This guy's reading his speech right now. This hmm. is the opening team meeting speech. Players. Yes, former players. Yeah, like. Yeah, I don't think a lot of casuals didn't notice. They yeah, they just I, talked about the speech. They didn't notice that part. I don't think the media is noticing that, but I think I think anybody that's ever been in that room. He's sitting there watching him look down and going, come on. The fuck? Come on. <laughs> about two birds. Hey, the, the, if you he, read some shit, it better be fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, word. Thing. You, good word play in there. Yeah. Yeah, good, yeah. yeah, there's going to have to be some real. I, that was Because that was my first takeaway, and that was the first, what, scene almost. Yeah. Yes. And first I'm, scene, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Because that's Aaron. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just assuming what Aaron's thinking as well. And every yeah. conversation that's kind of taking place about that whole yeah. situation, it's like you look and look, oh, mm. oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Because I don't know if Sala knows this or anybody else knows this. As soon as you get out of that team meeting and maybe the everybody's kind of mingling at night together, mm -hmm. There's going to be one asshole on the team that is going to be able to just speak publicly. <laughs> you see him read that fucking Eagle Crow thing? Yeah, you guys that saw was that. Pretty right? cool that would have probably been you. Yeah. Probably been you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big, a good story. Hey, yeah. good, good, good story. <laughs> Tough to remember. Good story. You know, that whole. Sure. And that's like, uh, we all noticed it too. Yeah. I love that you're But like, you know, hey, not when you're not in the locker room, though, what, you know, what, what the fuck do we know? You know, I thought the same true. thing the first time I saw Sirianni talk. 
in front of the media and like, okay, this guy's not gonna fucking laugh. When I saw John Gannon with the fucking, foo, 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 we'll see what that turns out to be. But Shut you know, it, it, we already know that. <laughs> what was that? What did he do? He's in a bad spot. He's in a bad spot. It's not going well right now. <laughs> nope. It's, yeah. like... it, it, it's, it's gonna be a rough start over there. NFL's but, uh, hard. What do we know? Yeah, NFL's so hard. It's difficult. Tough. It's tough. It is tough. tough. Uh, Connor, speaking of tough, Connor has a question for you about South Florida a little bit. Why? Yeah, D, but I mean, as a Patriots fan, I appreciate you saying you fucking hate Robert Sala's guts because that is wow. what you just said. We all heard Definitely it. Definitely not. Right now, going on in the AFC East Miami, uh, Wilkins is having a hold in. He's not doing anything. Obviously, you know, Tua's taking the media through the rounds of a play. And then, you know, one of your good friends, I believe, Xavier Howard, is making <laughs> sex tapes and doing stuff like that, allegedly. Kenneth That's just Bentley Whoa. batted. Yeah, yeah Bentley batted for yeah. recording. A, Armstead. Yeah, an intercourse. Yes. Uh, Teron Armstead hurt, got hurt apparently, but he tweeted that he's okay. He's a Finn, so he'll be. He's a tough son of a bitch. What's going on down there, though? Are they? Uh, are the Dolphins looking at like a little bit of a come down after last year? Do you think they'll be able to hang with the Jets and the Bills and the Patriots, man? And why are we only hearing I, about bad stuff? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that's the thing. That's tough. You don't. You don't want this type of shit, especially leading up to a season. I've got the Jalen Ramsey injury as well. Uh, so it is a lot. Of, it's a lot of storms down here. But hey, we're gonna be battle tested going into the year. Uh, look, if Tua stays healthy, Tua stays upright. I think we'll be able to figure out the rest. Big fans here with that defense. Whoever we have on there lining up to play, we're gonna play good ball. I'm not worried about it, but I don't like all the other. Now Armstead, that injury to see how that plays out, how long he'll be out. That's mm. obviously big. Yep. Everyone was excited about Jalen Ramsey coming over and him pairing up with X Howard. That would have been. Um, you know, one of the best cornerback um, duos in the, in the league for sure. But we still got a lot of talent, a lot of studs on that team. Uh, Tyree Hill, obviously, Jalen Waddle, Von Holland on defense, hey. uh, Phillips. Like, we got dogs up and down that roster. Going to be a tough, tough, um, obviously, a tough division to get through. But uh, I'm still excited. I still like our chance. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the Miami Dolphins as a whole. And they added old cuz on the defense, right? Yeah, Vic Fangio. Yeah, Vic, which yeah, Vic yep. I don't think Vic has been at a place that has been bad on defense for like the last decade or two. So probably going to help and add in his oh, yeah. mind there. Another year with McDaniel, getting to understand being mm -hmm. a head coach a little bit more. Get the Wilkins deal done, hopefully. Yeah. Armstead said he's, he's back. Tyreek Hill, you know, he's still probably going to try to go for 2K. Mm -hmm. He's still yeah. unguardable. It's like... All these storylines seem to be negative. Yeah, Mike White, too. Mike White. Which helps. Back up. Mike, Mike fucking White. Back up. That helps yeah, a Mike lot. Mike fucking White. Yeah. That helps. That helps Tua. If, if Tua does get, you know, knocked out for a game or, or three, yeah. you know, for Mike White to step in there and play ball. That, that, I think that was a big signing. Big, big quiet signing for us this offseason. But, uh, no, nah, kind of, I'm not worried. Things could be worse. We, we could be the fucking Patriots right now. Oh, uh, oh, oh what is that supposed to mean? Oh, oh. What is that supposed to mean? We don't have players yeah, but, uh, recording sex tapes. Allegedly. allegedly, allegedly, but the, allegedly. Card, allegedly. the video would suggest allegedly. that it's more than alleged. But like the island, allegedly. you didn't see. You saw the bat hitting so, the yeah. Bat yeah. video. You didn't yeah. see the sex video. No, I didn't see a sex video. Yeah. But yeah, I someone, think you read the the caption of the X. Bat and Bentley, Bat and Bentley. That that makes a move. Like, hey, we didn't make a sex tape. You didn't pay me for it. So this lady, uh, nah, we we don't know what we don't know what this could have been. You know, been. this could I be. Don't know. It's, it's know. probably an ongoing okay. legal case. Her phone's in there. She's trying to get her phone out of there. Yeah, yeah maybe she left her glasses. You mm -hmm. know, he's a training camp. You know, he said just she bust put her out the windows. On? She put her blinkers on and yeah. his car in. Well, Sorry, she doesn't want her yeah, car to get hit. Yeah, I mean, what are you? Right, you see her That's car. That's insane. Criminal. Really draw attention to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think, bad criminal. Right there. I think she actually. <laughs> I think she actually had music playing too. Yep. You know, like yeah, bumping. And I hut, What's that lady, Miranda Lambert? Little Carrie Lil Lil Underwood. Her, her. Yeah. What is oh. the. Before he cheats. Yeah. 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 Hannah. <laughs> Doug, Doug, Doug Rocky is into the, the side of it. Pretty little souped up four wheel drive. Yeah, that's what she was okay. playing, I heard. It was, yeah, and then yep. you know what the next song was, right? What's that? We the people. And Kid Rock starts coming on. And then I think a lot more people came over and started busting the shit out of that Bentley. <laughs> See, that's like when. You just shoehorn something in there. <laughs> he kind of did. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. We're listening to Cowboys this morning. Yeah. It's been on my mind since we sat down. I understand that. But, like, this particular situation, not the right. You never. You should have put. You should have kept that one. Country music. Okay. Someone doing some rowdy stuff, bashing a car in. <laughs> 
Kid Rock. I mean, they kind of it falls in line. There was just a post: Kid Rock drinking Bud Light. Yeah, obviously making its way around the internet after he took the AK-47 to mm-hmm. a case what? of Bud Light yeah. after the whole scene. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Kid Rock is always going to be a person that is going to be chatted about. But in this particular case, I don't think he needed to make a drop in. But I appreciate that that is on your mind going into a good weekend. <laughs> always is. Yeah, I appreciate that. Tone has a question for you about another South Florida story. Yeah, I do. Uh, D, but how long do you think it's going to take before Odell gets tired? of Lamar underthrowing him on every deep ball. Ooh. Here, here we go. Do we? What do we have? We got we got some training camp highlights. Do we got a, a stat sheet? For oh, I forgot you didn't see him. Yeah, it was two. Yeah, 14, you know, 14 for 19. No, no stats. Welcome back. This, this guy's the, golfing. Hey, sorry, yeah. I don't even hey, know. Just the eye test. Some people. Just got the eye it. test. It, everybody underthrows a receiver. Like every ETR. running back fumbles. Every old lineman loses a rep. Like, this shit happens. This training camp. I'm not worried about that, all right? I think – I honestly think Lamar Jackson is going to have an MVP – caliber season here we go I think the, Ravens, the Ravens they are my AFC pick to come out of AFC now obviously it's too easy to Ooh. pick the Chiefs but they are my pick to come out of the AFC um they signed signed Jadavia Clowney which I don't think is like a you know a huge huge signing but I think he he kind of seen he, he looks like a Raven that, that's a Raven defensive pass rusher when you think of one um so Clowney coming off the edge we got some other young guys obviously uh Marlon Humphrey got hurt he got, he got surgery on his foot He's a big piece that they'll need to get back um, soon. But having Odell there, I think he'll be healthy. Having Zay, Fow- Zay Flowers. I don't know if you guys remember the House of Comps. D. Butts House of Comps during the draft. I was really high on that <laughs> South Florida kid, mm-hmm. keeping that South He's Florida He's silky smooth, D. Butt. I don't know if you've seen hey. his routes. They show his routes. That dude is unbelievable. Oh, were they preseason? Hey. Oh, yeah, now we yeah. can talk yeah. about preseason. Oh, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, those matter, hey, huh? Preseason is like, it's kind of like the QB wins. Like how we use QB wins as a stat when it works for you. And it, yep. it, when it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So that's kind of the same thing with preseason, all right? So it's back to Zay Flowers with these preseason routes. The, hey, those, those are those those Ooh, receivers that are one. built like that. Like those Ooh, are the same yeah. motherfuckers that guard. You can't get your hands on them. They get so low. They get in and out of breaks quick. He's strong. He's fast. He can. Uh, he still got a good catch radius because he's going to create that separation. So I'm excited to see him in his offense. And then, um, you know, where's he from? Where's they from? Where's they from? He for, he's a Fort Lauderdale guy. He's a Broward County guy. So him and him and Lamar Jackson are pretty much from the same area, but uh, and he trains uh, with a lot of the same 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 guy that uh, Odell trains with actually Gold Feet down here. So shout out shout out to T A. But um, he's he's a dog. Rashad Bateman, we'll see what we got with him. Uh, Mark Andrews, I said likely great tight end room, and now they won't be out there in fucking twenty one personnel on third and eight. Like you can't do that in the NFL. And I'm not gonna you know shit on Greg Roman. You know, they got they, they got to the playoffs. He got a unanimous MVP under Grant Roman in that offense. But I think it was time for him to evolve and be kind of what the what the NFL is. Like, open it up, spread it out, let him throw the ball around. And then when it's time to run, take it and run. Yeah, you got the best guy to do it in the entire Absolutely. league. Absolutely. Ever. And, yeah. And you're able – ever? Oh. Ever. I, I, I personally think Lamar Jackson – I love Michael Vick. Michael Vick, I think, was faster. Um, probably a more, like, explosive athlete. But as far as shiftiness – agility, and then still having the open field speed to take it 67, 60, 70 yards for a touchdown, I think Lamar Jackson is the most elusive quarterback ever. Okay. Hey, that feel, put that on the uh, yeah. you can put that on <laughs> the, uh, the old ticker there. Yeah. I, I think you could certainly put that on there. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, speaking of another South Florida guy, what do you think Dalvin Cook's role will be like with the New York Jets, with Brees mm-hmm. Hall coming back? How many carries do you think a game? Man, that's t- no more than 15, which is good. Because Brees Hall, I mean, that's that's their guy. I think that's their, the, the guy that they're going to, you know, once he's fully healthy, that's the guy that they're going to be the, the bell cow. And then Dalvin Cook is going to get in there, get in where he fit in, I think. But, um, you know, that's that's the best thing to have uh, as a running back committee. You know, keeping your guys fresh. And that's the worst thing for a defense. You know, Brees Hall, let's say he's been in there for eight, nine, ten run plays. And then you got Dalvin coming in. They both can catch the ball out of the backfield. So it's not like a key when, you know, 33's in the game or 20's in the game. Hey, it's more of a pass or a run situation. They both can do that. They both can pass protect. Um, so, I mean, that, that's just great. And that, that goes back to A-Rod and what he's been uh, even making that money available to go out and get better. I know it's been rumors and talking about getting, you know, Bakatari. Nah. From Bak- <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that actually happened. I heard Chef kind of shut that down. Man, good but, to Goons. Um, yeah. Good to Goons literally said today, yeah, to lead this whole thing off, we're not tra- trading David. Nope. He's what he said. He said full name. Mm-hmm. We're, just to get this out of the way, we are not trading David. 
And it's like, oh, that's done. Yeah, so that's over. Yep. Oh, and I do believe, I don't know what sources told AJ, but like our our sources, our minds, mm -hmm. the Bakhtiari tag on okay. the ass, kiss my cheeks, pal. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. Oh, Just one friend do another. Just one friend do another. Go ahead. Go ahead and kiss my ass, yeah, bro. Kiss my ass. Look how much fun this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't eat my ass, it was kiss my ass. We figured, yeah. Well, one of the well. no, that's not what everybody's saying. Everybody was saying that he put him on his ass because he was like, I need you to come protect my ass. Mm -hmm. I need yeah. you on my bond. Take my back shot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what people thought. Yeah. Media. Mm. But I think what people need to really think is that it was just like a actual like hey, kiss my ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bitch. Which, right. I don't think mm, maybe, maybe. I don't. I don't know if he added that. I wasn't sure if he added it or not, but I could see it. Yeah, there's a chance, like, as he was putting it on there, he thought to himself, ha ha, <laughs> bitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Garrett Wilson, Could've. man. Garrett Wilson's so good. Hey, he's phenomenal, Whoa, man. isn't he? Oh, yeah. Man. What's yeah, that mean, Dr. Carter? He knows who owns that he ass. Knows. Oh, wow. Woody Johnson <laughs> in the Whoa, Johnson & Johnson yeah. vaccine. Oh, no. that's what he means? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's kind of true. His football rights are with the Jets. The universe owns Aaron Rodgers. Oh, oh, you're right. You know what I mean? What are we Which even dimension? talking about? What was that about? Woody Johnson Woody. and the vaccine own Aaron. Wow. What oh, a hey. shot he, at this he, guy. He's the one that went over there. He knows the history. Could you imagine their conversation if that ever gets brought up? Now, we see Woody on Hard Knocks, and I don't know if he's just walking up to Aaron with confidence and having a full conversation about anything. You know, he seems to be pretty uh, – Yeah. Yeah. Stay, <laughs> stay in – a little bit far back. Arms reach. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. good. A lot of money. Yeah, we're yeah. paying a lot of money, Bob. Well, you think uh, <laughs> yeah. that's going to play good? And hopefully he does well because I appreciate his social media in there. But I don't think Bakhtiari's going over there, you know? But good All run right. game helps the offensive line immediately, right? Good run game. Smart quarterback. Obviously a quarterback who, who, who knows protections inside and out can get him in some good situations. I mean, but you still – you got to have talent. The one thing about the O-line group is you can – you can't do it by yourself. It's got to be a unit. So uh, big ticket. Beck then got to get healthy. I think he's obviously he's got to be a starter on that team somewhere. Um, they got the talent there. They just got to put it all together, man. That O line, that shit is tough, man. You need you need each other. You need depth. Um, but you got to keep you got to keep a rod upright, man. No matter who you got back there, quarterback. If you can't, you know, sit back there and go through your progressions. Yeah, you need an offensive line to win too. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. how it goes. It doesn't show up till it shows up, and when it shows up, you're gonna lose. Because the other team has it and you do not. And it's the most important part of football, though it's not glitzy and glamoury in the conversation during the entire offseason. But all of a sudden you start watching things, you're like, oh, no, all of a sudden all the money we spend everywhere else does not matter. Mm -hmm. Why does it not matter? Yep. Well, we can't get the fucking football anywhere. <laughs> Why? Because our offensive line stinks. That's what everybody's saying. they saying same all Jets, Jets with the O-line, mm -hmm. OL. You yeah. know, I thought that was clever. pretty clever on the newspapers over there. Yeah. But I don't know if we need to just automatically rule them out. There's a chance no. that any group can come together and do their thing and hopefully hack it and Aaron will scheme it. But it is definitely a worry. Good luck to Dalvin Cook. Last question here for you from Tash Meat. d -Bot, speaking of Dan Bakhtiari and the, um, the Packers, you obviously knocked it out of the park when you said, hey, listen, I've, I'm watching tape of Sam, Sam Darnold, and this guy fucking sucks. He just doesn't have what it takes. Now, granted, he is – now having a career resurgence uh -huh. as maybe the you Back know the up. best thrower of the football ever in the history of the 49ers. <laughs> but when you look at Jordan Love, uh, everything so far, do you think uh, he's going to be good for the Packers and that you know fans should be okay with what they're going to see? Or would you kind of put him in that category of Sam Darnold and potentially trending towards like, hey, this guy's going to play for five teams in the next seven years? Oh, no, I, I definitely would not put him in the in the Darnold category at this point. Uh, in, in, to, in, in fairness, you know, Sam Darnold wasn't put in a great situation. He wasn't he wasn't putting a bunch of great talent around him. Didn't have a great old line. I think uh, Jordan Love is in a much better situation with talent on the outside, talent in the backfield and some talent up front as well. And then Matt LaFleur, we're, I, it's a big year for him. You know, because he's he's got all these great records and all these things, you know, during the season, during the regular season with uh, Rodgers as your quarterback. Yeah. But now you got a young guy that you kind of have to bring along. But um, Jordan Love is talented. He has some time to sit and learn. So he wasn't just thrown in that fire. But if I'm a Packers fan, I'm definitely optimistic, especially if I look around my division. And I know, OK, Justin Fields is still in a place where he and that offense still have to prove themselves. Kirk Cousins, I think it's another contract year for him. So who knows what? how long he's going to be there. Uh, Jared Goff. Best, you know, I, 
I think easily the best quarterback in that division. So you look yeah. <laughs> obviously in a position where you can be uh, kind of get Kirk, into that lead Kirk's at some point in the next Kirk. couple of years. So uh, now Kirk, look, Kirk is great. I think Kirk is underrated, but I oh, think Jared sure. Goff honestly is even more underrated. I think okay. Jared Goff is probably probably the third best quarterback in the NFC right now. So that fuck easily, off. Uh, yes. Yeah, you got. Yes. I, mean, I, I would put Jalen Hurts yes. over him. Um, shit, he might be second. Matt Brock Stafford Purdy. is a quarterback Brock in Purdy, the Sta- I mean, Stafford, Stafford just missed them their whole year. With what a- about Dak? What about Honestly. Geno Smith? Brock Purdy, Geno Smith. I would take Geno the- Smith. So, Geno, okay, Geno, Geno's so, oh. up there, right there with him. But I'll, I'll put golf up there, either two or three. Geno's Hell up yeah. there. Um, and then you got, I think, Dak and Kurt. Hey, I'll tell you what, a couple of those odds that I saw Jared Goff throw. Oh, yeah. They were dimes. It's like, hey, can we just, why don't you run that 10 times down the field? (laughs) Let's just, let's do that every fucking play. Where he's throwing that on. That's undefended. You can't, you can't do shit about it. Yeah, that's one of those, you just, you know, you look at coach, coach looks at you, you know, you go back to the huddle. Like, that's, that's one of those plays. But I mean, he he was the, he wasn't the one pick for a reason. And I, and keeping Ben Johnson. In that building uh, was huge for Jared Goff and huge for that organization. Yep. He was probably one of the hottest names, you know, in the league after that year. He had a lot of talent out there that people don't don't you know they just don't get hype. It's, it's, it's Detroit and everybody mm. expects him to stink. But I think no. MCDC got something cooking over there. And uh, Jared Goff, a lot of expectations, a lot, a lot of expectations for the Lions coming into this year. We'll see if they can live up to it. But I, I like Goff yep. a lot and what he put on film last year. Yeah, those expectations aren't a burden either. No, those are wind beneath my wings, man. <laughs> man. All right. That's right. That's right. That, makes, that gets me pumped up. Yeah. Yep. You actually earned those. You think I feel bad about that? No way, says MCDC. I love to think about that with Goff because once you start really laying it out, it's like, yeah. hold on a minute. What if the Lions go on a run this year? Goff's going to be in the MVP conversation. Yeah, definitely. Be- and they were top five. <laughs> points per game last year and they had the least amount of turnovers amongst any offense last year so if they can just do that or even get a little bit better and the defense definitely got better towards the second half of the season i understand the hype does it scare me absolutely not because it doesn't matter we stink every year so if we stink again who cares but i don't think we do <laughs> okay. i think we're gonna be really good this year. hey and once again i've said this before the nfl thinks the lions are gonna be good yes, yes. they got them opening night Fa- right. favorites to win the division they got the o- yep. yeah, favorites to win that's the sports books but the nfl mm-hmm. put them in opening night yep. like hey we would like the lions to take on the chiefs that could have been any of the 17 games. and do you guys remember the last time mahomes and golf played each other on a prime time game oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Monday night football. so that's what they're hoping for we were there yes we were it was insane it was absolutely insane there in Los Angeles. Hey, I, I love how they drafted too man it was real it yep. was real <laughs> throwback it was real you know yeah. fuck, <laughs> fuck your fuck your premium positions Look, Whoa. we're going with the best guy on our board. We got Gibbs, running back. Yep, take him. Yep, give me Campbell, off ball backer. Yep, take him. Give me Branch. Like all these guys who at certain positions, you know, people value the certain positions at those spots in the draft. But they said we're going out and we're getting our guys. I love their staff. So yep. should, we'll see if it works. I'm, I'm definitely rooting for them. Uh, and and kind of like a hard knocks, like we got a good view. We got a, 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 a Dan Campbell, who he is as, as a coach. As you know, he's him every day. Like that's who he is. So did you like him? Episode two and Hard Knocks. Episode one. I did like him. I did like him. I liked him. I liked the staff. Um, I like how the team. And and I once again, you imagine yourself sitting in that seat. Now at first, as a player, you might be like, ah, all right. You know, he's a former player. You know, he's a coach. And then as you get used to him, you see it and it going. But I think they're building it, and they they built it the right way. A lot of people wrote off golf, man. When he went, me included. I was ready for him to be like a bridge quarterback for the Lions. To draft another quarterback, you know, number one or two, a couple years later. But for him to go back there, bounce back, and I heard y'all talking about Mariota and that confidence thing. Like, that confidence shit is, is obviously, you got, that shit is real, man. That, that's the, because you can't fake it. You know, you can put in all the work, you can do everything you want. But as a player, if your confidence is shot, and that happened to me my second year in New England, like, as, for the first time in my life, 23 years old. And I'm like, once that confidence is shot and you're out there, like, playing to not fuck up, like you're dead, you're dead in the water. So I can't imagine that even at that quarterback position. So for Jared Goff to bounce back after being a number one pick and then written, going to a Super Bowl who has a number one pick and then being shipped to Detroit, <laughs> um, you know that's that's you know we're in the league. That's where careers used to go to die. And Cleveland, used to go to yeah. Detroit and Cliff, yeah. Cleveland. Yeah, it, it was pretty much over with. So. Big shout-out to Golf, man. We'll see how they handle it. Hell, yeah. Good luck to the Lions. Excited to watch them opening night on September 7th, which will be the first day that we are live on ESPN as well. Just 
20 days away, and d will be back throughout the entire season. Darius will actually be joining us on Mondays and Tuesdays, full-time in Thunderdome. Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hell yeah. Let's pump to have, Rico. Let's go. Hey, pumped to have you back, d but Excited about that. And I know you've been golfing literally all day, every day, with a new old white at a new golf course mm -hmm. with your entire yeah. family. Yeah. For I've, been working, I've been working on my tan. Okay, and let's guys, talk about you guys that. guys still? No, that's talking. You guys tell? I, I won't got pet me here. Well, that's what I'm saying. Were your ears, you know, burning the other day? Because I talked yeah. about how it's been good sun for the whites yeah. to get some good tan. Yep. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? They're talking about the global boiling or whatever it is. It's happening. Instead of global warming, it's like there is a little silver lining for the whites. It's like you walk outside, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, you're getting a good yep. coat. Yeah. We're all tanned up. You know what I mean? Life is good. And then Pac Man and Dirty were like, we fucking hate that stuff. We don't want to get any darker at all. And they're like, winter, wait till winter comes. When winter comes, there's no sun. Ooh. Light bright season. We are flexing out here. What? What did you call it, Gary? Light bright. He's glowing. Oh, fucking soft. Well, that's. He's soft. He's soft as baby shit. <laughs> oh. I'm out there in the sun, man. Hey, listen. Listen, this this melanin right here, man. Look, first of all, this special order. You can't just find this shit anywhere. Y'all know it's a hole in the ozone layer, so. I'll probably be the last. It'll probably be 27 of us left by the time y'all motherfuckers die off. So uh, I That's golf, right. it's probably I right. swim. You know, I'm I'm out there, baby. I got my summer glow on right now. Well, I think Pac-Man hey, actually said, what? Hey, Pac -Man said nobody wants baby to be as dark as Darius. Yeah. I, I think that's I've, seen, I've seen one lady as dark as Darius. That was that was unbelievable That's, to that, hear. that's not. I'm from South Florida too, so you know, I, I'm I walk around not. You know, I'm dark. I'm usually one of the darkest people in the room, but, you know, I see a lot of black motherfuckers around here. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we love it. And we've been in style since the late 90s. The, the ladies love black motherfuckers. I'll let you know that right now. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, I got my summer glow on, but I will have, I will be playing some fall golf this year for the first time yeah, out there in Indy. Um, shit, probably out there in Jersey too. So uh, I'm yeah. excited for that. Hey, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. You know, yeah, that's right. What, uh, that's right. What I've always heard. But also, good news for the season. We got actual lights this year, D. But yeah. I, I saw that. I saw that. It's big time. Yeah. So we got some top ones. We got yeah. I have to put that little motherfucker up under my seat. <laughs> that was an awesome conversation after the first couple of weeks, D. But you're killing it. No motherfuckers can see you. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. See you. You know those pictures on the internet that are just like teeth and eyes. Yeah. That's what we got going on. Yep. We got to figure this <laughs> shit out. <laughs> we got to figure this out. So we did. Dude, hey, like let's have a bigger yeah, one hey, here. That's a, that's a that is the tough. That is the tough part now about this coat. You know, you take a picture. You outside. You gotta be. You gotta be where the sun is. Where you, you can't be back backlit when you just black. But um, much more benefits than there are bad things. So I take it, baby. It's all right. I'm gonna try to get as much sun as possible for this next week or so before it goes into hibernation here in Indiana for six months. Yep. I'm gonna try to catch you this fall season. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to catch you. You start. You start off Alabama, so that's a hell of a place to start. Are you gonna be with us there? Damn right. All right, we'll see. I will miss that, son. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, you got to be. The simulcast, I mean, I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. uh, We're going to be in Alabama. Now, like the, the Ewers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but like whenever we did the Ohio State, Georgia, that's neutral field. Now, granted, in Georgia, but oh, not yeah. like Athens. At home. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then the national championship, it was raining in SoFi in Los Angeles. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that like, was this going to be the first time we're going to be like in uh in a college yeah, home, home arena. Like the pregame shit That's that happens. Wow. Right? I'm very pumped to get down so there. Pumped. And then obviously Friday we'll be live somewhere on campus. And then uh, we we looked at the schedule That's a little bit crazy. more. We assume game day is going to be there. Not we. I don't have the power to say yeah, that. Yeah, I couldn't no. figure out another Kirk has Texas, the same Come on, you got to be there. Has to. Has Kirk, to. Kirk had the same Bama? assumption too. Yeah, but they haven't made the announcement yet. So, like, I don't think it's official. No. But that should be a hell of a weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're on Friday there, then game day, then that multi-simulcast plus primetime ABC there. Yep. First NFL Sunday. Plus first NFL Sunday, then Monday, overreaction Monday, yep. then Jets-Bills. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go. That run. Let's fucking go. That's a hell of a start. Let's and you go. forgot about Friday night, start. too. What's that, pal? You said you forgot about Friday night, too. Friday night, Jim Mercer and Chris Angel Chris dangling Angel. from Lucas Oil Stadium, breaking yeah. a world record. The, yeah. This generation's Houdini. You're right. right. I completely forgot about what that. What a run. Yeah, September 7th, <laughs> we're live on ESPN. Yeah. Then Chiefs, Lions, 
Then Friday, we got our show live in Alabama somewhere on campus, Tuscaloosa. Then Friday night, Chris Angel's breaking a world record at yep, Lucas Oil yep. Stadium. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday, game day probably there, prime time. First, I mean, that slate is going to be incredible. Then first day of Sunday NFL football, yep. prime time. Wow. Then my, oh, Holy it's how many days? 20 days. Wow. Let's go. Come Let's on. go. Let's go. Can't wait. I got 20 days to get my tan on. I definitely will. Can't wait for Good it. Good luck, baby. I've been trying for years, bro. You, I got a tan in bed trying to get to mm -hmm. This is the year. It just turned me red. I was this I was this can right here. <laughs> I was this for about two weeks. I had actually stripes going down my cheeks for like three months because I got third degree burns from the yeah. fucking yep. tanning bed on my ass the cheeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was it's not easy out here. But I did not I was that Tampa son when you were down there in uh, Tampa. A real reddening. Tampa. Yeah, yeah real, real red. Red. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. certainly that. I was surprised to hear, though. Like, I thought I was just living in a bubble where Pac was like, I'm trying to get no sun. And Dirty was like, I'm trying to get no sun. I can't wait for the winter. I can't wait for the winter. I'm like, wow. God damn. I didn't know that we are viewing the sun completely opposite ways this entire time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then D-Buck comes in there. He's fucking soft. Yeah. Baby bitches. shit. Soft. <laughs> All right, Debo, we appreciate you. Great chatting with you. We will see yes, you sir. this season a lot, and we're thankful for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Wait. Darius Butler, thank you, buddy. Yeah, Debo! Okay, so he definitely heard it. That's why he came in so strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's why he was like, he you know, I, I've been working on my tan. Yeah, that's bullshit. Word has gotten back to him. What do you say? You know there's a hole in the ozone, so there's only going to be about 27. 27 of us <laughs> left, yeah. <laughs> Not wrong. All right, let's get to a break. That's locker room, by the way. Don't get to hear a lot of whites and blacks talking about sun and tan no, and don't. any other real sectors of the world, you know? I don't think that's happening in modern offices. People are probably scared of it, but I feel like it's good to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So what is it, Darty? It's light-skinned? Don't want to get any more sun? Yeah, yeah, that's generally how the way it goes. Got but, it. you know, I enjoy a little sun kiss action. It's cool. Yeah, I'll go on vacation. I guess I'll get like a week or so a little bit. Come back know? looking like Pac-Man. And then, so there's levels yeah, there's, to this, you yeah, know? Yep. There's levels to this shit. Mm -hmm. Kind of do the whole thing. I think I can get to dirty. I think I think my tan could get <laughs> to the... Sure. The state. My wife is <laughs> real dark. Mm -hmm. Italians, I got some Italian friends that get real, real, real dark. I, ew. Not really, not as much anymore, but I used to. Don't be ooing over there with your uh, bright white. You know, he says bright light or whatever, or light bright. You are just bright white. Irish to a T, baby. You and Seamus out there spray painting your body's white. Bingo. Nice, because like if you sit next to him and, and tie and at, out there and he's, it goes me, him, and then Ty, I don't have to look around him to see Ty. I just look right through him. Yeah. That's nice. That's classic, Connor. Yeah. Just glowing. You have sunscreen on your whole body right now? Like, no, no, that's just your skin. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I'm an SPF right, 100 guy. I don't care. But we will like to remind the Midwest people, like, hey, sun's about to leave for a long time. Long time. Let's get that in. It was like 60 degrees this morning while I was driving. I'm like, oh, shit, this is happening. Yeah. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Bro, it's going to be, I think it's going to get hot again soon. But yeah, I mean, it, it, the fall, we're staring down the fall, it. fall yeah. weather pretty soon. You can smell it. I worry yeah. about the boiling in the summer being a real detriment in the winter. Oh, because. For every action. Just another equal extreme. There's yeah. an equal so and opposite uh, reaction. Yeah. Deep freeze? Now, a lot, a lot, the flash freeze, I assume, will be back, and I assume we're going to have some zero-degree weeks this year. It's all right. I don't believe in Bill that. Bill for it. Right. Yeah, who knows? Bundle up. And by Bill for it, we mean we'll just be in here and then in my house inside. Yeah, exactly. simple. And then here. And just put that on repeat for five months. It's supposed yeah. to be cold in the winter. We've done it our entire lives. We'll yeah. be just yep. fine. Bingo. Good point. But I'll tell you what, you take a trip to a warm weather climate in the middle of winter, you think to yourself, why have I been yeah. What the hell? It is a what real like? What am I Everything doing? Everything feels better, you know? It's like, yep. And then they say, like, yeah, well, vitamin D uh, that comes through the sun actually does lift your endorphins to make you a, hap a happier person. And you start looking around, you're like, if the weather's nice, I'm probably going to go outside and, like, do stuff. Oh, I'm a healthier version of me, too. Oh. So yeah. science says that in, like, mentally. That's why old people. That's why old people go to Florida so they stay active. And that's why, if you see any old people that are choosing to stay in the four season climates, like real dogs, we yeah. appreciate that. We old, appreciate old that. Old people go to Florida for one reason. What's that? That's the die. Sex. Both of those. They might die while you know, doing that. Village, yeah. The villages, you know, where they're all popping Viagras every day. And I have heard that Florida is heaven's waiting room. Mm hmm. Yeah. But boy, it's always warm. It yeah, is. Nothing wrong with it. It's always warm. Let's get to a break. On the other side, we'll have Michael Lombardi. Let's go. You know what he's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. You know what I mean, AJ?
Yeah. Making the grade. I can't wait. I cannot wait. He doesn't even know either. He just. And then we all listen. We're like, holy shit, Lombo. Is that, did that get real? Yeah, I think it's somebody said, right? Somebody. Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody said that, Lombo. Well, it's behind closed doors. It's about time it's been said. Yeah. It's like, we love you. Oh, yeah. I fucking love this guy that's about to join us on the other side. Who knows what news he's about to either re-break or break, thinking it's already been broke. Sure. We'll do that in about five minutes. Be a friend, tell a friend. Fuck. You got two in front of you. Oh. Nice. Oh man, those back rims. Yes. Last two days. There it is. Mm. Yeah! Nice. <sighs> Fuck. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Oh. Ooh. There's three, there's, oh, oh, oh. there's three more right there, too. Calibrated. You got footballs. Calibrated for you. Oh, yeah, calibrated. Gonna be so bad. One of these <laughs> has to fall. That's the one. Oh! oh! Hell yeah. Good calibration. Wow. wow. We're about to have a great third hour. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. Joining us now is a man who might be the largest celebrity in the history of Earth. And I'm not just talking about his size. Obviously, everybody does that. But could you imagine a time when this man walks in public that a bunch of motherfuckers don't say, holy shit, that's Shaquille O'Neal? Mm. That has been his life for probably the last 30, 35 years. He's handled it perfectly. This man is a mastermind whenever it comes to business. Obviously, on the court, he's the most dominant player of all time in the history of basketball. Four-time champion of the world, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah! yeah. Hello, is Pac-Man there? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? Pac-Man, you know the uh, statue of uh, limitations is up. I can tell the story now. Can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell the story now. Hell yeah, Shaq. Uh, Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pac. This is great news. Okay, so remember when uh, Pac-Man had that altercation in the uh, airport? <laughs> He was really sticking up for me. Pat, I just want to say thank you for always being my bodyguard. And you whooped that dude ass because he was disrespecting me. And nobody knows the story, but I, I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you. you. I, I, I've been keeping this secret. I ain't want everybody to know our business. Yeah. Hold on, this is Atlanta Airport chicken in hand. Motherfucker, that fight that we Popeyes. both... Popeyes, yes. That, yes. that was the stick up for Shaq? Yes. Yes. What do you say, Shaq? Guy said something to you? What happened? I don't know, Pat, man. Just say, hey, man, you don't talk to Shaq like that. And I just had to get on my plane. And the next thing I know, Pac-Man put them paws on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold printers. What? Pizza. What? what? Icy Hot, what? insurance with a cartoon. Yep. What? yep. I mean, you're you have a prolific Rolodex of business. When did you know that was going to be the case? Because it's inspiring to all of us. I want to let you know that. I didn't hear what you say. Could you repeat all the all the stuff that I sell for? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like ten more too. I don't think I listed off all of them. No, no, just uh, go ahead one more time. I think it was printers. What? what? Pizza. What? what? Uh, I think there's insurance with a cartoon. What? what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now there's Novex Biotech GF9. You are a business savant, though. The shoes, obviously, we've all heard all the stories of, oh, your shoes are too expensive, then you buy in the company and say, fuck it, we're going short. When was that, like, a focus for you, and how did you know that was a gift? 18 years old, I meet Magic Johnson, and he tells me, it's okay to be famous, but at some point, you want to start learning about business. First thing I bought was the dummy's guide to starting your own business. It intrigued me a little bit, and I said to myself, okay, I want to I be the only big man that's doing that. But in order to you know, be, be successful in that world, I had to be successful in the other world. So I really had to dominate and really had to win. Are you a supermodel? Because you have the sexiest <laughs> jaw like Hell yeah. That's real, Shaq. He, he, he's on his GF9, but the other stuff, I think. <laughs> you had a quote uh, you said in an interview years ago. You said, like, my thought process begins where normal humans apexes. And I just want to say, did you come up with that on the spot? Do you still say it? Because 
I actually steal it and use it in real life still sometimes. I always give you credit for it. Another confession is I wasn't really born. I was found on the train. <laughs> a, a lot of people think I'm an alien. And a lot of times these thoughts just come to me. I'll just go outside and these thoughts just come to me. I realize that in order to be the best or to be perceived as the best, you have to have forward thinking. So I just, you know, growing up in a drill sergeant environment, my dad wasn't satisfied with good enough. We had to be damn near perfect. So whenever I score 30 points and, you know, somebody said, oh, he had a dominant game. I said, no, you missed 12 free throws. You should have 42 points. You should have did this. You should have did that. I was always trying to, you know, better myself. When did you so, know Kobe uh, was yeah. a dude? Was it like immediately upon seeing him? You're like, oh, this is a guy? Right away. I knew that uh, he wanted to be great. I knew that he was very passionate about the game. And I knew that if something was done he didn't like, he would voice his opinion. Kind of reminds me of Pac-Man. Pac-Man and I have the same relationship. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but the respect is there. Like, hey, Pac-Man, you shouldn't do that. Motherfucker, don't call me that. You're right. So, you know, Pac Pac-Man's my little brother. I'm his older brother. You know, I think the respect factor is way more important than the I like you, I love you factor. You know, we've had many conversations. I love Pac-Man. He loves me. And I love Kobe. You know, we had a lot of disagreements, but if I had it all over to do again, I'd probably do it the same way because he pushed me and I pushed him and, and the respect was there. You know, people always say, oh, well, you didn't like each other. We didn't like each other. If you go back to the first championship, 15,000 people in the arena, about 100 people on the floor. I put my hand up. Who's the first person jumping my arm? Look at it. Look it up. You don't have to be all lovey-dovey all the time. You just have to have, have, you know, have respect. The last question here is you get back to your rehab. Connor has it for you. Yeah, Shaq, speaking of that, a lot of times... No, no, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the dude in the fucking cowboy hat. He ain't such a dog. <laughs> Tone Diggs. He, he has a gambling yeah, yeah. show every day he's preparing for right now. Tone loves you, too. Shaq, I appreciate uh -huh. that. You guys are on the set, we just talked about the show. You ever say anything just to see if you get Ernie off of his game? I don't like that question. Back to the other guy. Uh, cool. Connor is uh, this awesome. guy in the uh, other hat. Awesome. No, I, actually, I, actually, you know what? You guys may think Charles and I are the funniest. Ernie Johnson is the funniest guy on the set. Don't break the table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I just break shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Somebody oh, yeah. came sprinting behind the barrier and tried to spear him. He I fucking dare somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I dare the next two. <laughs> Ass kicking. What? what? Saudi Arabia. What? Riyadh. What? Taking a jet plane. What? All the way there. What? All the way back. What? All the way back. What? WWE champion. What? Thank you, champion. Destroyed our shit. What are you gonna do to change and make Tua better? Have you gotten so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, yeah, and you're no. shaking hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're gonna start with scoring more points than the opponent. Wow! Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, that's uh, right. No, I think um, there's... I, I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards forwards, okay? Um... What things do I see that are really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at... Hey, he's it, accurate as hey. Boom! He, he, That's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just... I, I, you were leading me. That's how, You should do this, maybe. Dude, Think about it in the yeah. future. Yeah. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's... Sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for... Our whole lives? Oh, my God. You tell... Me? Wow, this is uh, weird. Yeah. Whoa, it seems like you guys just became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Shut the fuck up!
Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, August 18th, 2023, hour three of this program starts right now. Football! Football. And a baby AJ Hawk to my left. You're right, that is happening tonight. Two games as the Giants take on the Panthers and the Bengals take on the Falcons. Then this weekend, we have every other team playing in this week two of preseason football for the 2023 season. We all agree that some of these games suck, but we got some superstars that are going to be on the field for the Chiefs quarter and a half, allegedly. Okay. For Patrick Mahomes and the boys out there in Andy Reid's camp, we assume there will be some others that will play as well. The Bills and Steelers allegedly yep. got a lot of starters playing for at least the first quarter. We might might have some good football. Let's enjoy the hell out of it. Let's go. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Town Diggs is here and joining us live. We assume from his house on the Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of a dentist appointment, which we hope everything is okay. And that suck hole of his. Ladies and gentlemen, a general manager, a man who's an author, a newsletter. What? A TED speaker. What? A negotiator. What? Yeah. Everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Michael Lombardi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, how's the mouth? What did Dennis say? Dennis say, hey, tell me what how you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is, what was I it like? I got phobia of the dentist, but we got through it. We're good. You know I, what you can do now? You can listen to mute. You can listen to like podcasts while you're getting your teeth done. So that was pretty good. You know, you just stick that in your ear and it's good. Yeah, that's better than like a gang. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to listen to that. Yeah, that's good. The dentist world is an interesting one because they, to go to school to become a dentist, they have to do like actual doctor school. Yes. yes. Like yes. they have to learn everything. And then they have to learn like the trade almost of dentistry and all that. They get people who are at their absolute most oh. pissed yeah. to go to a doctor. Like going to a doctor, going to get bad news. But normally you go to a doctor, they're going to tell you what's wrong. With the mouth, I have no idea why this is happening. It's annoying. And then they got to finger people's mouths with power tools. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is not a desirable place to be, the dentist's office. So I would not want to be a dentist. But shout out to them, honestly. Yeah, shout out. Yep. Shout out. Shout I'm out. thankful. Yeah. I, I haven't been in years, but They're when I go word. back, I'll remind myself of everything I just said because I certainly hate going there. We're thankful that you're joining us here on this Friday. Let's dive right in. This has kind of become one of these things where we say, hey, Lomba, you know you like broke news like two days ago whenever you said insert whatever thing is. This week, the big thing was whenever you said when Trey Lance's mom picked him up from the crib. Yeah. He, he did not have that quarterback instinct. Then in that same mm -hmm. clip, you went on to say, like, behind closed doors in your eyes, the decision has already been made about yeah. Trey Lance. Now it's kind of figuring out what's next. We asked Schefter if he heard your quote and what his thoughts were, and he said Trey Lance very much still has the opportunity to be QB2 for the San Francisco 49ers. What are your thoughts on the quarterback room? And do you think Trey Lance, even though maybe when he was picked up in your eyes he didn't have it, can you get it? especially when you're already in the NFL? I mean, if you've read my books or listened to anything I said, there's certain players <clears throat> that have what I call the crib thing. You know, you can't explain to anybody why Michael Jordan did what he did on the court or what Barry Sanders did or what Peyton Manning saw. I mean, it's just an innate, instinctive thing. That's why when you're a scout, you have a category on every player to fill out called instincts. Does he have instincts for the position? which it allows you to say, okay, you don't have to – he just kind of knows how to play the game. Like, for example, defensive back, corner. Everybody thinks corner is an athletic position. It is. requires speed. But what it really is, it's a balance and instinctive position. You've got to have a feel for when the ball's in the air. You've got to be able to jump when the ball's in the air when you're in balance. So what I said about Trey Lance was he just doesn't possess instinctively how to play the position. Now, a lot of people were critical of what I said. That's my evaluation. Like, everybody that gets evaluated gets evaluated for instincts. Some quarterbacks are just born with it. I can't explain why Brady does it. I can't. But it happens. And so, look, I'll stand by what I said about Lance. I've watched the tape. I've seen him play. It doesn't come. Bill Walsh used to want to be able to say all the time, the quarterback's arm must be tied to his feet. There's got to be symmetry to his play. That's why he always talked about boxers. You know, punch, move, punch, move. That's quarterbacking. And you got to have that. Like, 
That's why quarterbacks are, are – that's why there's so many blown picks. That's why Joe Montana went in the third round. So I, I just think to me, does he still have a chance to be number two? I think it's highly unlikely. I, I, I don't think – I think that's over with. I think what Kyle said, I think somebody asked him about that instinctive thing. Kyle never addressed it. He went on to say, well, that's you're subjected to that in the national media. Look, that, that's what it is. One thing I'm not is going to say what, what people want to hear. I'm going to say what I see. Okay. Well, I appreciate you doing that. And then in the follow-up of the quote, you said, when that decision's been made behind closed doors, I don't think you said exactly like that decision has been made, but you're basically saying, if I'm in that room, this decision has already been made, and we are trying to figure out how to transition out of that. Do you think that is what they're actually talking about behind closed doors, or are you putting well, yourself there? Go ahead. They can't get away from them, Pat. They have, first of all, they're not going to be able to trade them. It's, in spite of his popularity on Twitter, within the National Football League, we all watch tape, right? Everybody watches the tape. And he's got, I think he's got almost $10 million over the next two years, guaranteed. Good for him. That's great. I'm happy for him. But no one's going to take on those guarantees. So they're going to have to do the best of the situation with what they have. I mean, that's the reality. No matter what the spin is out there, and look, there's been great spin. Nobody's had better practices than Trey Lance until the games start. Nobody's had better days. I mean, I read all the quotes online every single day. This guy's electric. I mean, we got 10,000 Dick Vitales out there telling me, <laughs> oh, everybody's great, great, great. Then you put the tape on it, it doesn't match. Like, somebody's got to speak the truth around here. Like, not everybody's No, great. no, no, no. Well, because your truth might be different than somebody else's truth. And I think a lot of people, myself included, are like, man, when we look back on that trade, Paisan, big one. Yeah. To go up to three, when you have Jimmy on there, when you've been to the NFC Championship, mm -hmm. when you've been like in a Super Bowl winning mode, pretty much at this point, when you go back to the trade and make it Trey Lance, and then it never does, like that's going to be judged for a long time. Lynch doesn't mm -hmm. care though, right? Because Lynch got a guy, Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of the draft, and that's all they're worried about? It, it really, it doesn't matter where you pick him, it matters how you play. And we've all made mistakes in the draft. But here's where you really become problematic is when you won't admit a mistake, when you keep trying to lie to yourself. I mean, I've lived in organizations that have done that. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, you've got to be able to move on. Look, Trey Lance isn't a bad kid. It's not, there's nothing, there's nothing there that's creating problems. It's just, can he play to a level that can win for the 49ers? And Brock Purdy can, and he can't. So they have an answer. Now, We've got to give Purdy more time to see what he does and how he continues to play because I truly believe it takes 20 games for you to really understand what the quarterback is and what he isn't. 20 games, so that's a full season in a month. And when you see that, now all of a sudden it's a little bit like rookies in baseball, right? When a rookie comes up in baseball, you know, pitchers don't really know him. So they throw all these pitches and once they get a read on, oh, he can't handle the slider away or he can't handle the fastball in, that's what they start throwing. Same thing with quarterbacks, okay? Baker Mayfield had a great season, but then once people condensed the pocket and pushed inside, not so great, right? Now it becomes problems. And so I think you have to give it some time before you declare the guy, you know, Dick Vitale great. So that's like you're saying um... – the, the tape's out on this guy, pretty much. That's that's like when people start saying it. It's like, tape's out. We figure, we, this is this guy. is who right. This is who we know. This is how we strategize and, against him. Is a, about and, then, the and then great players, once they know what the rap, then they, 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 they adjust. They play their game better. Pivot. Right? I mean, Kyler yeah. Murray. If you keep Kyler Murray in the sure. pocket, he struggles, right? If you, if you try to... You know, yeah. do something. If you let him run around, he's tremendous. So there's a game. Now, it's hard to do. It's always hard to execute once you get the read. But great players find a way to to, to solve the issue. Yeah, so what you just said about Kyler might be true, but Kyler's confidence is at a whole new. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Kyler's yeah, confidence. Right, and I only know that from one still shot mm -hmm. of him wearing a sports bra with a catapult on it. He wore that into public, knowing that there would be cameras. Sure. He is very confident in himself right now. Mm -hmm. That's good news. He might have changed the game. He might have pivoted away from what his weaknesses are and turned them into an asset. Who knows what's going to happen over there in Arizona? And I would like Catapult to create a different option. Yeah, Please. you know, what I mean, I, I would like a different option because every college team I see wearing these, every NFL team I see wearing these, right. they have a great product here. Oh, yeah. Great product. It's like there has to be a different option because 
we're not judging it. I mean, I wear a tank top every day, and if I was jocked enough that I had big pecs, maybe I do throw a sports bra on yeah. Yeah. every once in a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I maybe I do toss it on. But the internet is not forgiving. <laughs> you know, the internet no, no. kind of does their thing. And Kyler's confident. We know that. But you, that's a good point there when you bring up about Baker and some others. It's like we can see a little spurt because people don't know him yet. The book's not out on who this person is. Can he continue to go? You think Brock Purdy's got it? I think he does, right? Yeah, I, I think, you know, one thing you like about Brock Purdy, a lot of career starts in college. That's why you see uh, Dorian Thompson, you know, when he played so much at UCLA, and he, plays, he played effectively again last night. He's playing well this summer for the Browns. I think that has a lot to do with it. Sean Clifford in his first work last week against Cincinnati was really effective because he's got some game experience. And so that experience manifests itself forward, and I think it's helpful. And that's what helped Bert Purdy. And I think Purdy's got enough skill players around him He's, you know, what, what's Purdy? He's very accurate. His arm and his feet are tied together. He can play the game in rhythm. And he's got skill players, whether it's Samuel, McCaffrey, Kittle, you know, Ayuk. He's got people he can get the ball to and make plays. And he's a dog. You know, mentally, he's a dog. I think we all can see that whenever he celebrates, how he competes, yep. how he acts behind there. He's got all the makings. I hope he continues to go. What a story that'll be. Go ahead, AJ. Bombo, I was listening to you on your podcast last night talk about Dalvin Cook and his contract situation that he's that he signed in New York. You said it's a bit unique. What can you explain exactly what you meant by that? Yeah, well, I mean, Cal, Dalvin Cook's contract is for seven million dollars. Now, there's two sections of the contract. He's got a minimum salary contract in paragraph five, and then he's got a lot of money. I think over four million dollars in 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 roster bonuses. But the roster bonus language is somewhat strange in the sense that if he's on the 53, if he's on PUP, if he's on IR, if he's on any list, other, you know, NFI, he still gets the money. Then he's got another million in change that if he has to be on the 53-man roster. So that tells me that the Jets wanted protection against something that may happen down the road. And I don't know what that something is. And I said this on the podcast. I don't know if there's something that he's got to deal with with the league office, but the wording of that contract and the way it was written and the way it comes out. Now, he's got $1.6 million of incentives that he can earn it to go to 8.6, but the Jets have to win the Super Bowl for him to get that 1.6. So, you know, there's, it's a high level of achievement incentive. So, but both the agent, Cook, and the club organized, did this contract in a way to where they're, the Jets are fully protected if by happenstance something happens where Cook is suspended, he's not going to get his money. Interesting, you know, because there is, like Pac-Man asked that question. Mm -hmm. That was a question that Pac-Man asked one of the insiders like two weeks ago. Yep. I, think. I think it was like uh -huh. two weeks ago. And it came out of nowhere. I, I don't know what Pac-Man's going to ask. You know, there isn't a, a that whole... We don't script any of that stuff. When he asked it, I was like, man, I don't think anybody's even having that conversation at all. And I don't remember if it was Rap or Schefter. They basically just dismissed that. We haven't heard anything at all. And then AJ texted me last night. Hey, did you hear what Lombo said about Dalvin Cook's contract? And then listen to it a little bit. And it's like, is there? I wonder. And how would it? it, it there can't be, right? Because we would all know about it at this point, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't somebody know? Yeah, well, sometimes we don't know. The league office could be invested. They asked Salah what he thought about it. And he just was kind of very noncommittal. You know, but there's a reason you don't put you don't put that language in a contract, right? When you have game per game bonuses, they usually are written like he has a million dollars of those. If he's on the 53, he gets his roster bonus, 17 divided by whatever the number is. Uh, but when you put language in, even if he's on IR or PUP or, you know, and you leave out the one area where he could be on, all of a sudden you say, well, wait a minute, is something going on behind the scenes? I don't know. And I'm not trying to be judgmental here. I'm just reporting what's actually in the contract, you know? Yeah. So the Jets did it for a reason and Cook accepted it for a reason. I didn't do it. You know, I'm not involved in it. I'm just reporting it. Yeah, no, I think it's a good piece of information for us to keep our eyes kind of peeled for, for sure. because if it was to come early in the season when Brees is back early sure. you know it'd be like uh what's going to happen we obviously hope nothing happens at right. all but it's been a couple times now where it's kind of popped up out of the blue where I'm like is there something we're all missing we have no idea we'll keep our uh, ear 
to the grind. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. The boys have some questions for you, Paisan, if that's okay. Connor, go ahead. You yeah, bet. Lombo, you just said it kind of takes, you know, 20 games to really know a quarterback, so I'm not expecting you to have, you know, the hard answer here on this. But do you know anything about Sam Howell? Like, is Sam Howell, he just got announced as the Washington team's quarterback, and it seems as though – Ron Rivera's kind of buying in on him, right? Because if he don't doesn't have a great season, is it safe to say like Josh Harris, not Ron Rivera isn't his guy, didn't hire him. He might be, you know, hitting the road. And is Sam Howell a guy that will be the quarterback in Washington for the, you know, foreseeable future? You know, when Sam Howell was a young player at North Carolina, he looked like he had a chance to be a high-level draft pick. And then his career at North Carolina – didn't really keep that trajectory going. And I know a lot of teams that brought him in when he came out in the draft really liked him. They liked his intelligence, his arm, and all those things. He didn't go until the fifth round, which meant like like Dorian Thompson. I mean, you know, like sometimes guys slip. And so I think that's, that's, that's the reason. But I think he's got enough skill. Now, when you watch the Washington football team in the first game of the preseason, they running, they are running the Mahomes version of the West Coast offense. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on on how to really make a lot of plays and execute, and their offensive line is going to have to do really well. But Washington has a, a lot of receive. They've got good receiving core. You know, their running backs I think are good. They're not great, but remember, this is a team that beat Philadelphia at home last year and turned the ball over and spotted them a touchdown. So, and how can't play any worse than the quarterbacking play Washington got last year in terms of the turnover? If he can protect the ball and complete the pass. That's easily competable. Hey. That's the hard thing, right? Sometimes, you know, we make the game harder than it really is. You got an out out there for seven yards and you throw it in the dirt. You know, that, that makes the game harder for you. So I think how I, I have a lot of faith in how I think Washington's a better team than they're getting credit for. I really do, especially defensively. They were very good in the red zone last year. They're very good on third down. So I, I think they're a lot better than they are now. It's all got to come together. Right. And I'm not sure it will, but it all has to come together. You talked about and I almost interrupted you there. I apologize. You're talking about just making the throws that you have to make. Like, let's not be crazy. Um, did you see Anthony Richardson <laughs> Whoa. on the Internet today? I, I, don't yeah, know I saw that. Yeah. Running to his right. Just a drill. Jump ball throw. I think it's like a 50 yard ball yeah. in the midair with no leverage or I mean, that's all arm, you know, just quick 50 probably 55 yards right into somebody's fucking bucket. Perfect spiral, by the way. That mm-hmm. thing's spinning, didn't overgrip it or whatever. And I saw- Great catch, too. Great catch. Our equipment manager's real deal. I mean, real deal athletes out there, they do their thing. And they'll hammer 40 to 50 beers every night if you need to. <laughs> what? But they will, um, there's another play I saw live at training camp where he rolled to his left, and then he had the same like 55 yard ball right into Alec Pierce, into a bucket for a touchdown. Now against Buffalo, I think his arm strength potentially gets him in a little bit of trouble. Also, a little miscommunication with the wide receiver potentially. Throws like a dumb pick or whatever. What should my realistic ex- uh, expectations be of Anthony Richardson? Because everything I see, I'm like, this. We got, a, we got a guy here. And then they talk about how he is as a human. Humble, hardworking, competitive, wants to be great. Like that whole thing, the way he's viewing it behind closed doors with the Jonathan Taylor situation brewing and Shane Steichen. They're saying he's perfect fucking teammate. Like, Everything that's coming out about him, and he's 6'4", 250, you can't teach that. He runs 4'4". Right. Like, everything yeah. I'm hearing is, like, very, very exciting. What have you seen? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I, I think he went to the right coach, right? So I think when you break down the the Indianapolis Colts offense, and I wrote about this for VEASAN online, and I write about it in, in my new book, the, the single-wing offense that, oh, yeah. you know, we all play Pop Warner football. Glenn Pop Warner was a coach. And back in the 19, early 1900s, he was the head football coach at the Carlisle Indian School. And he's the one who invented the, the, the single wing. He invented it. Now, back then when he invented it, there was really no quarterback. There were two running backs in the backfield. And that single wing became the T formation, and then it became a, one quarterback in the backfield. And the Eagles have taken that concept and have expanded it to the current day to where we have what, what I call a six-back attack. And I think if you study the six-back attack, it really benefits Richardson's strength. Like, for example, last year, a lot of people would tell you, well, Jalen Hurts ran for more yards in 23 than he did in 22. That's not true. His Actually, his average per attempt, his average per carry went down. The threat of him running became really a problem. And his ability to connect on throws down the field 
became even more of a problem for the offenses and the speed of the game. And I think Richardson in this six-back offense, it's going to take some time, but I think it fits his skill set perfectly. It's got to. Now, a little like Josh Allen, it's going to have some growing pains. I think Josh Allen was below 60% as a rookie in completion. He was bad. He threw 10 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. So it's going to take some time for him to grow, right? But I do think the system and the player are the perfect marriage, which ultimately makes everybody happy. That's that's the utopia. That's what you want to get to in terms of finding out. It took Buffalo a little while to figure out what the system was perfectly for Allen. Where I think Indianapolis has an advantage, they know what it is. Yeah, utopia. Everybody's happy except for a running back. He mm -hmm. um, and I've I've talked about this ad nauseum, obviously, and it's one of the bigger stories in the NFL because this guy was up for potentially the MVP two years ago. Now, last season, obviously, much different, and the team ended up with a fourth overall pick, and the culture behind closed doors was seemingly terrible, just absolutely terrible. But, like, Colts fans, I think, are excited to move on here, you know? So, like, either get on the train or get the hell out of town almost is how some Colts fans feel. I'm just reporting how this is actually being viewed, boots on the ground here in Indianapolis versus the national people. National fans are like, Jonathan Taylor, I, rem I remember in Wisconsin, and two wow. years ago he was a guy. It's like our situation is one where a culture is trying to be built, and our best player is now for the second week in a row out of the building. Now, it's personal reasons this, this week, and we hope everything's okay. Last week was out-of-state rehab on an ankle and all this. How do you see this ending? You know, I asked Schefter about it, and Schefter said, you get us in a room for about 30 minutes, we can handle this. Bygones be bygones. Shake up the Etch-A-Sketch. Let's add a little bit more money. Let's kind of get to another season, and we move on. What do you think about it all, and how do you think it ends? Well, I think when the owner came out and said what he said, I think you kind of have a sense that he's pretty firm in his position, and I think you've got to understand who you're negotiating with when you are negotiating. And I do think, you know, the kids changed from April – of this year where he said he signed his name to the paper to this stance. And it, and it really doesn't anybody any good. Like nobody wants somebody else's problems, right? Nobody wants somebody else's guy who's creating a problem. You could say, well, if he goes to another team, he won't create a problem. Well, unless you pay him what he wants, he will. So you're a little bit worried about that. But I agree. I think if they could get everybody in the same room and try to solve the issue, but the issue is not going to go away. No one's paying $17 million a year to a running back. It's just not going to happen. You know, we saw Cook uh, get take $7 million of hard dollars, but a lot of it is tied to these rosters, right? We saw Zeke take about $3 million. So the market is shrinking, and it's not the right time. And, and unfortunately, I think he's got to play well too, right? He's injured. He didn't play well last year, and I think he's got to play well. So it behooves him to kind of – turn the corner here as it behooves the Colts. So Zeke's real contract three. I thought six. What's that? Zeke's real contract is three, is what you're saying. Not six. Like I, I think there's a lot of incentives in Zeke's contract that can get him to six, but I don't think it is firm. There's two contracts. There's the one we hear from the agents when it's released. And then there's the one that gets filed with the league office. And those are always dramatically different. They're always different. And I think Zeke has a chance to get three, I think three and a half up, so up there. But And then he has more incentives based on ever. Now, he practiced the – what's today? Today's Friday? I think he practiced yesterday, yesterday. for the Patriots in their group work against uh, the Green Bay Packers. So there's a chance to see him. Whether he plays this week or not, I don't know. But those practices, the Green Bay-New England practices, were fairly extensive. I mean, they were on the field for a long time. Yeah, well, these joint practices I think people love. Bill obviously does a lot of them, and if he's doing it, it probably makes sense for others to do it as well. Go ahead, AJ. Lombo, what are you hearing out of Green Bay? Are you hearing anything new on uh, Jordan Love? We know their defense should be much improved. They have weapons on offense. How do you think they're going to be this year, especially, obviously, it, it hinges on the quarterback play? Well, I think a lot of it hinges there. And I, and I think the, the work that he's going to get against New England this week in practice really is going to help him because he needs that work, right? You know, what What I think young quarterbacks have to be able to do is not make the hard, not make the easy hard, like I said earlier. And that's what he has to do. I thought his game against Cincinnati was good. I haven't watched his practices against uh, New England. I can't wait to watch the game tape to see what that looks like. But he, you know, if he can get them to where the, he's getting the ball, like Brock Purdy, I'm getting the ball to to Aaron Jones, I'm getting the ball to Dylan, I'm getting the ball to Watson, I'm getting the ball to Dobbs, then I think they have a chance because I do think their defense, especially with Alexander there, 
I think their defense is going to be really good. I, I think they have a chance. Van Ness, they drafted in the first round. You know, they get Rashard Gary coming back healthy. They can pressure the quarterback. Um, whenever LaFleur talks to Belichick about what the practices are going to look like, and you said that Jordan Love, like, needs this type of thing, you think LaFleur is like, Mr. Belichick, is there any way you could potentially do some of that ghost fuckery <laughs> yeah. that you do here yeah. in some of these drills so we can see if Jordan Love can pick up a disguise or something? Like, like is that something that would be agreed to, and would Bill Belichick do yeah. that? Oh, they definitely would. I think there's you know, no question. You know, I, I think that's why you have them. You want to be able to see – you want to simulate game situation so where the player has to play fast, right? What's the hardest thing? You guys play the sport, right? The hardest thing is the Saturday game is way slower than the Sunday game. And the Sunday preseason is way slower than the regular season. So you've got to figure out how do I simulate the regular season speed as quickly as I can. And these joint practices can really help do that. I think it's important. And I think, you know, look, New England's going to run their stuff, which is multiple, which is a lot of different looks, odd float or even, you know, blitzes, corner blitzes, zone dogs, man, all, all these things that happen. And it requires the quarterback to have to make a lot of quick decisions and the only way you get better at it is by doing it all the time. Yeah, and if Bill Belichick's like, yeah, uh, yes, we are going to run our defense, Coach LaFleur. Relax. Yeah. yeah, the Sam Darnold I'm seeing ghost thing, yeah, we'll be doing that. Yeah, you're welcome. And then Jordan had a great day Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Wednesday, allegedly, the Packers won. Now, how do we know? We don't. Everybody has a bias that is tweeting things out, even the journalists do who are covering the teams locally. And then we heard Thursday was Mac Jones' best day that he's had as a Patriot pretty much. There's a chance, whenever you think about the Mac Jones side of it, where this offense with Bill O'Brien, like it does click, right? And it does come together? Yeah. And that could have potentially happened on Thursday? Or what do you make of Mac Jones allegedly having the best day he's ever had as a New England Patriot on a practice field? Which well, I, I haven't seen it, so I'm like you. I don't know whether, you know what to believe. I know a lot of times when I was in the league and I would read the clips of our practices and it never jived with the tape, so I, I tend not <laughs> to always believe that, you know. So, But I do know this. Uh, I, I think that they, they're with Trent Brown back at left tackle. I think that's really a big help, right? You know, they've had a lot of injuries in this offensive line, and, you know, with Cole Strange getting hurt earlier in camp. So they've kind of had this makeshift line. They're starting two rookies, two fourth-round rookies in this offensive line. And so they moved Reef inside the guard. So I, I think, to me, when you say they had a better day the next day, I think that's a positive sign because a lot of Mac Jones' success is going to come from can they protect. The Douglas receiver, I think, is really good, number 81. I think he's yes. got a chance to be special. He's got that quickness in the slot that you want. And he can separate, and that'll be really helpful. Kendrick Bourne seems like he's back to where he was. Oof. But I, I think ultimately, you know, a lot of the success that Mac has to have is decision-making and getting the ball out, and that line's got to come through for him. Yeah, protection is a big type of conversation happening all around the NFL right now. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Lombo, everyone's talking about the Jets and how, you know, they can't really protect and how that could be an Achilles heel. But then they have joint practices with Carolina, and we saw in the Carolina in the preseason game, you know, like a big knock on Bryce Young going into the the draft in the season was, hey, is this guy going to be able to hold up all year with how small he is? And then you know, a lot of people were saying, well, his anticipation and feel in the pocket and being able to move around, like he he should be okay. But then he just got his ass beat for you know basically two series in that game, and I don't know if that was more the Jets' defensive line being really good, or is that you know is that something where they might actually really be concerned with their offensive line and whether or not Bryce Young is going to be able to hold up for the remainder of the year? You know, it's funny, Ty. Uh, I got a text from a good friend of mine. We both worked at the Raiders at one time, and, and he's like, are you watching this Carolina game with the Jets? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, good thing Al's not the owner of the Carolina Panthers because Frank Wright would be in a lot of trouble tonight. Oh, okay. Preseason, you're already fired. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm just telling you, you, you know, you could say that, but if you lived in that world with him and he came into the room and is all whites or all blacks, 
and he watched his quarterback, who he just gave a ton of money to, get the living crap beat out of him, and you kept watching it go on and on and, and on, on and, and, on, and, on, and on. on. Your ass was going to get in a lot of trouble. Like You were going to get called on the carpet, and that wasn't going to be pretty. If you think people on Twitter can get angry at you, you haven't seen Al Davis. Like, there's just no chance. Like, there's no chance. You would get dressed down like nothing you've ever seen. So I was really disappointed in Carolina. Their offensive line was good last year in terms of run blocking, right? They played their starters. The Jets had their second team line. They couldn't block Solomon Thomas. They couldn't block anybody. I mean, that Carolina better get serious or else the quarterback, he was getting hit on every play. You know, even on his completion. So I think they got to do something about that. And I think, look, Frank Wright is 0-4-1 as a starter as the opening games. If you're Frank Wright, you got to have a come-to-Jesus conversation with yourself and say, like, maybe I'm not having a tough camp here to get my team ready for the opener. 0-4-1 to start the season as a head coach isn't good, I, I, last I checked. Yeah, zero in that first column is normally going to be judged yeah. poorly upon you, but we actually chatted about this a little bit earlier in the show, and we're not going to dive into it now again, but, like, feels like tougher camps are becoming a very yeah. standard thing these days where it was almost yep. disappearing for a bit, wasn't it? It felt like tough camps was kind of becoming a thing of the past, doesn't take place anymore. And then now all the winning teams are like, no, no, we only know one way pretty much. It's like uh, yeah. it's almost an old school feel happening around the NFL again. It has to because, look, the AFC, if Cincinnati starts five and four like they have the last two years, can they overcome that? I mean, there's so many teams competing for the seven playoff spots in the AFC. You know, with the you know Indianapolis and Houston, you could say because they're starting rookies won't be there, but everybody else could make an argument whether you believe it or not. Well, be there. there well, the fucking hunt, right? be there. Yikes. Okay, we, we <laughs> will. So if you start Yikes. five and four, is that going to be good enough? You know, I I think you got to play well. Look, good teams play well in September. They play well in December. The Bengals have been a little bit of a they they've. They've crescendoed to the moment at the end of the year where they played the best. I don't know if they can start five and four this year and still do it. Yeah, the AFC is packed. The oh. NFC, though, there was a conversation that yep. got started in the last hour that Tone Diggs wants to ask you about. Coach? Yeah, Lumbo, uh, we were having a conversation, and Darius Butler said that he thinks Jared Goff is probably the second best quarterback in the Third NFC. is the first one, and then, third. He, then he did say second, second or third uh, in the NFC. How do you feel about that? How do you rank the uh, quarterbacks in the NFC? Look, look, Goff took a team to the Super Bowl when he was protected. Everything about Goff is play action pass and protection. You know, I just did my top offensive lines in football, top tackles, guards, and centers. And, and Detroit has three of the top of, of the of th their five positions. They've got three guys, either blue or red chip. Here we go. Oh, really yeah. Good and, and, and if you – and this Gibbs kid is going to be really – they're going to – he's going to be the Camaro – for their offense. He's going to be everything. Okay. And what Goff did so well last year was after the Dallas game where they had five turnovers, they only turned the ball over three times the rest of the year or two times. I mean, he protected it. So when he's protected, he's really good. He's accurate. It's when he has to speed up that he hasn't been good. Again, this is the strong weak points, right? But when you play to his strengths like Detroit did, he's really going to be effective. I don't know if you could argue with that. I really don't. I mean, he played really well last year. He really did. And can it continue? I think it remains to be seen. But he played well enough last year to win games, and he did. Hell yeah, Goff. Let's okay. go. So, Lombo, are you buying the hype that the Lions have right now? No, you know, I'm not, I'm not all in on that. I, I, I think you got to get good on defense before you get great. I worry about their defense. Yeah. Can they hold up, especially at corner? I think Mosley's still on PUP. Uh, I think Green Bay is going to be better than most people think. I, I mean, look, <laughs> Minnesota, they were really good. And, of course – you know, we got the Chicago Bears, and we'll see what they do. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, we talked to Eberflus in the first I part. heard. I, I had listened to the interview. I heard it, yeah. I, I bought a Super Bowl ticket immediately after that. <laughs> right out the window. I cashed that bad boy in. I said, look, I'm all in. I'm sold. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I was here in the I, – I was doing a lot of amens. I was doing amen, amen, amen. I was in church. Yeah. Finally amen. 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 Man. Maybe that's what we call it, the Lombardi Church, whenever you stop by. Yeah. We appreciate you so much. Have an incredible Anytime, my guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs> you'll watch Can't wait for the games. You'll watch all these games, yeah? That's what you're doing all week? I, I'm going to watch them on my computer. I'm watching the Eagles right now. And uh, from I, I, this Cleveland team now, don't minimize. Cleveland's going to be good, too. Ooh. Cleveland's going to be good. 
They need to figure out that kicker position, bro. Seriously. That's the problem, right? You know, the same thing with Jake Moody, the best kicker in college football last year. Last week he missed two kicks. You know, we all talk about, oh, kickers aren't important until you miss a kick, right? And then you realize that teams need it, especially when most of the NFL games are decided by seven points or less. You better make that kick. Robbie Gold still on the market. Macy Crosby still on the market. Mm -hmm. I assume some of these teams that are trying to make a run know, like, we aren't going to let that be the thing that breaks all of our hearts. At the yep. end of the season, it's almost like forecasting. For Cade York, though, obviously incredibly talented leg. Hey, and I think golfers, people that just golf will know this. If you're on the tee box and you're just hitting like a fade, okay, or like a slice even, yeah, you can at least start to play it and you almost know it's coming. He missed those kicks last night, just like he did in the first game. One ball right, the next one left, right? So, like, this is the first one, misses it to the right, barely. I mean, this is NFL football. You're going to be able to miss close, and some of those will stay in there. And then he has, does it again, and he goes the opposite direction. It's like he did that in the first game as well, and my first thought was like the thoughts that are going through his head right now before he's kicking, like he's going to have to get those out of there because I think he can be talented. But Cleveland is not a place to miss hit balls because that wind mm -hmm. yep. it will eat them both up. You know, you got to get yep. you got to hit clean we, balls. When we had Max. When Matt Stover was – was this goes so far back, he was a plan B free agent for us from the Giants, and he did not kick well initially in Cleveland. And Belichick hung with them, and he, in the week three of the season, he made two great kicks against the Bengals, and his career just took off. Sometimes it just takes one make, but when you're that erratic, when you're playing Army kicking right, left, right, left, it ain't going to work. you got to figure it out. <laughs> you felt good about that one? You felt good about that? That's a good one. I never heard yeah. that right, left, right, left. That's Army kicking. You've seen it. The guy he goes right, he goes left. I mean, you know, I mean, I never, in my whole career, I never watched a kick. I just waited for the reaction of the fans to see if it made it or not. Well, that's what they say kickers are supposed to do, too, and D linemen and everything like that. But it's hard not to get a peek if you don't hit that thing clean. Oh, is it, football God's going to bless me? And that kid's got to be like, Oh, Son of come on. Oh, you know, I hope he gets better, but I think in his eyes, if he had one miss, it'd be a lot easier mentally whenever he goes in there. When you're army missing, that's a problem. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen. You can't Yeah, we're not the army. We can't land on the beaches. We gotta hit that thing down. I mean, <laughs> look, when you watch Tucker, the son of a gun, I mean, he doesn't I mean he you can't even like if you shrunk the goalpost to like two two feet in either direction he would still make them yeah well he hits a clean ball so it's um it's end over end so like there's guys that can just hit a in, so like right here is probably like the sweet spot that entire thing right there now if you hit it in there you're going to get the ball to travel far but if you hit it like perfectly the ball will have a perfect rotation end over end that is easier to control that'll cut through whatever as soon as you start getting a little x on it just a little bit off kilter more surface area wind grabs wind effects so like in cleveland in the afc north for instance boswell hits a very yep. clean up and down ball justin tucker hits a very clean up and down ball so that's going to cut through that ball is right end over end i mean that fucker is it's clean. unbelievable that's a clean ball Cade york doesn't hit a clean ball right now so no. I've, I've never seen somebody be able to adjust from hitting he, a little bit of an x ball to a clean ball he has a lot of leg talent hopefully he'll be able to do it but i don't know if you Cleveland, think he needs to go to a kicking coach i mean do you think it's a I think it's his plant foot like i don't know enough about kicking i just i know the result but swing. to me it seems like it's got to be something with his mechanics i think it's a swing thing like his swing probably good in like a warm climate like uh maybe like a dome where it's a little bit more forgiving. But in that AFC North, I think he's going to run into a lot of, a lot of like potential maybe. Huh? He's got to, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. Hey, good luck out there, Kate. Yeah. yeah. Go get good it. luck, Kate. They're going to need they you. They ain't though. waiting. I can tell you this. Cleveland's got no – Cleveland lost too many close games last year. This is, a, this is a make or break season for Cleveland. They can't be waiting for Kate York. They can't walk off the field and say, well, our kicker beat us. You can't do that. You, you, you got to be able to make those kicks. It's called the NFL. Yeah, and Cade doesn't want that either because he'll be out of a damn job. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, never out of a job. That's you. You got 10 of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardo. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, that was disheartening to watch with that guy. Mm -hmm. That Cade, Before his first off. kick, I, so on my feed was Joe Thomas. You guys had Ross Tucker, correct? Yeah, yeah. Ross Tucker. We had a Ross Tucker show. So I guess. I was on the, the, the local Cleveland feed, I guess, so it was Joe Thomas. I don't know who the play-by-play -play person was, but, yeah, Joe was 
openly nervous for Cade's kicks early on. So he made some kicks early. He actually reposted on his Instagram story a post. That's from real? He really did that at halftime? Yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't did someone do it? I mean, is someone controlling that for him, or do you think he really did that? There's potentially a member of the dog pound who wants him out of Cleveland who could have screenshotted and made a fake post from him yeah. at oh. halftime to kind of build the narrative, I guess. But from all accounts that I looked at, he was like something he reposted, and then obviously it ends in catastrophic fashion, even though it's yeah. just a preseason game. But like so much leg talent, hits the ball so far. But, buddy, I've been there when you don't know if it's going left or if it's right, and I'm nowhere near the level of kicker he was or whatever. But that in here is where it starts getting. Yeah. Brutal. I would say that, like, as a kicker, it's like golf. Like, I, it's got to be so mental right now, not as much mechanical. Yeah, so, I mean, it all affects everything, but yeah. but that whole hitting it clean just out of nowhere from going to a kicking camp, I don't, I don't think that happens. Like Matt Prater, that's not gonna. Is that gonna help you in the moment when you get? It's like hitting the driving range. You can strike the ball in the range. You get that first tee, like it's a different story. Yeah, so like Matt Prater, for instance, he hits an X ball, legendary X ball hitter. <laughs> he does not hit the ball clean. He hits an X ball. That's his swing. And towards the tail end of his career, on like his third team, after he's already broken the NFL record a couple of times with such a strong leg his ball now like kind of has like a little a little fade on it it starts to the left and then comes back to the right and he didn't do that early in his career and then it just showed and i said uh why why do you why do you think you hit that ball and do you, he said i have no idea it just showed up one day <laughs> so now i just play it it's just, like yeah. all right sweet like that's a smart way to look at it but like Cade can't do that Cade can't play a little bit of a fade clearly or there's some guys that hit draws. Like, their ball shape is like a draw. There's some guys that hit straight. We were just talking about them. It's like Vinny hit a little bit of a draw in there. You know? So, like, we – I assume Vinny knew that that was coming. I kind of knew it was coming. That's kind of the ball that he hit. Cade's all over the – that's not – I'm pulling for you, though, buddy. Yeah. I'm pulling for you, buddy. But, like, Cleveland's not the right place to have – No. That type of thing, which like really, Lombo said too, they got a lot of pieces in place. They do not want that to be like an issue. Yeah, but Cleveland should have known them when he drafted them too. Yeah, you know, like that's and up. you got Robbie Gold, and Mason Crosby out there, guys yep. that have hit a bunch of kicks. So Robbie, you know, hits that ball, he kicked in all the elements too. Yeah, so that's why he's good in Chicago. Now he's not, even though he, I think he had a couple fifty yarders last year, which fifty yarders in games are considered long, but in practice, like everybody in the NFL is hitting from sixty some. You know, like fifty six yarder for Jake Elliott last night was just a walk in the park. Like, mm -hmm. Guys have massive legs in the NFL. It's normally something that they you are judged upon. Have to have a strong leg, and then we'll figure out if you're accurate or not because it's long season got to be able to get it up you're probably going to go through some muscle stuff so we like like strong legs in the nfl mm -hmm. robbie gold has never really been known as like the long ball hitter but here he is in whatever year 18 hitting 50 some yarders last year and he hits that ball end over end perfectly he would almost be the right answer mm -hmm. for the cleveland thing crosby doesn't hit the he doesn't hit like the he hits a little lower yeah but his that, that ball Pops off of Mason's foot. Like he, it looks like he'll hit like a 48 yarder. It looks like a chip shot, like how he swings. Yeah. And also, here's another thing for how strong a guy's leg is. Like Cade York, for instance, his first field goal last night. If it gets to that net quick, that's how, you know, mm -hmm. you can tell how strong yeah. a guy's leg is with how fast the ball gets to the net. Like, mm. not everybody's going to get offered an opportunity to hit a 55 yarder or a 60 yarder throughout their career, but you can tell if a guy's leg is live with how fast it's getting to that net right there. Like, Cade York's ball is getting there quick. Like, that ball is flying. It's yeah. just like, got to – going to have to tighten Takes up. Those, it's his, tighten his up. ball is taking, like, a sharp turn, like, in the – that's the, the scary thing. Like, oh. fade and slice to where it's, like, it's going, and then it just, you know, will curve and takes yeah. it right off line. And I don't envy it at all. I had similar problems, you know, and it is not a fun thing. And then I started – What a terrible punting. position. What a terrible position to play. Yeah. I mean, I don't – I mean, <laughs> as in, like – Nerve-wracking. I just think of, like, my kids doing it and my buddy, like, Mike Nugent, kicker forever. Like, I was nervous for every kick Nugent ever made. Yeah, no way. Yeah. No way. It doesn't sound no. fun. I don't even know. Yeah, like, they are, there'll be, like, a highlight that'll show for me for, like, field goal kicking time from back in the day that'll, like, pop up. And I'm, like, I'm nervous for me. Like, mm -hmm. what was going through my head there, I yeah. wonder. You know what I mean? Who knows what I was saying to myself while I was lining up for that. Not the greatest of times before that ball's kicked, but, hey, fuck it was normally the end thought. Let's go ahead and try to kick the hell out of this thing. And it didn't always go where it went, and they made me a punter. You know, and Cade York probably, <laughs> if they were to transition him into a punter, 
Not saying they will. He's a great kicker. Probably going to go on and have a great uh, career somewhere. But I would assume if he started punting, probably pretty good. Pretty good at that, Probably, because you're going to have a real strong leg to be the old punter. Speaking of, I pulled my groin, my quad, and my hamstring the other day. <laughs> oh, no. When you were punting? Yeah. I was murdering some balls, though. I felt pretty good about it. And then They're all gone? All of those things? Yeah, I think my groin's the worst. Groin? Groin is the worst right now. Groin is the worst. What are you going to do? You going to do anything for it or just rest? Kind of cold, though, this morning. Mm-hmm. Didn't cramp. Did you? Didn't drown either? Didn't? My wife said, like, you didn't even think to, like, call me after you died? I was like, whoa, babe. You should put a harness on. Get a safety harness that'll pull you up and out if you pass out or something. You get That'd stuck again. Like strap myself into like a, yeah. a little bit of a, yeah. a, a, what's it called? A can of, uh, uh, carabiner. Carabiner. Uh, carabiner. Yeah. Yep. Put, carabiner. Put a carabiner in right mm-hmm. here that comes off idea. the roof yeah. of the Thunderdome. And it can lift me up. And I can hit an emergency button like I fell and I can't get up button like those old folks have. Yep, life alert. You just keep yep. a snorkel out there. Yep. Mm. As you an eject, put a, an airbag in the bottom of it. Boom! Shoot you right out. Yep, that'd be good. And it's, mm-hmm. Good ideas. There's a and there's a roof right above you, and it breaks your neck, and you die. There. No, whoa, no, whoa, whoa. The roof. Put it out in the open. Put it out in the open a little bit. Yeah, but if we pull it out in the open, then all of a sudden we got to deal with the elements a little bit more. We need to be under a roof at least. You can knock it over though. You can use your body weight to knock it over. Oh, then so it's like a eject. rocket. So yeah. I start rock as yeah. I'm drowning. Hit it. Yeah. Yep. I'm rocking back and rocking. forth, and then as I get <sighs> out from it, boom, boom, it'll be like fireworks when fireworks fall. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'll be shooting. Yeah. Boom. Just gotta hope safe. you don't hit a tree. Well, out there we're good. We got no trees out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A couple yeah. crows though. Definitely no. Yeah. Ones. And if you remember what Coach Bob Sala wrote down. That's right. How about D Butt seeing that? How about D Butt? Like, I haven't even chatted to D Button about it. <laughs> that yep. is every play. Yeah, it's weird. Weird things you notice. It is, it's, it's not a big deal, but it is. Yeah. Sounds like a huge deal. Well, nah, it's really no, not. We're a just huge like deal. shit talking. About it's just something. It. It's just one little, it's just something. Yeah. It's just like, hey, mm-hmm. guy, so the Eagle story was too tough. Like, that is, that would probably be what I would have <laughs> said if I was, depending upon what year I'm in that locker room. Who am I? Am I good yet? Or am I still the guy that doesn't know what I'm doing? Do I know it? Like, nobody new to the locker room is coming in and going, this guy's reading the fucking... <laughs> but if I've been around, you know, four or five years, I'm pretty well established, things are going okay, boy, oh, one of the first things that would come out of my mouth <laughs> is, hey, that Eagle story is so goddamn good, got to write it down. To Coach Sala, I would yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to mess it up or something. Yeah. Whatever he would say, I'm like, oh, you didn't? Yeah, of course not. We didn't notice. We didn't notice. He didn't read word for word, but he definitely glanced down multiple times just to kind of see where he was at and make sure he was sticking with it. He needed it. Sure. How rude is that of us that that is our – So rude. Everybody's yeah, so, so rude. rude. Every one of our immediate thoughts, though, we're not the only ones. Hey, we are so That's jaded. what I'm saying. Are we jaded? Is that what we are? Yeah, we jaded? it seems like there's no reason to address the team and try to pump them up from what you guys talk about sometimes. No, no, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> oh, there's certainly pump up speeches. Like, pump-up speeches are definitely very, very, very tough to – get the point across to the whole squad how you're feeling that day. Like Bill Belichick just going up there and saying, hey, just do your fucking job and everything else will take care of itself. That seems like the only way to do it. Well, he wouldn't do that. It, it was usually Brady who allegedly would give gives, the pump-up speeches, yeah. which would probably hit home a little bit more. The whole, you know, Chuck actually had, um, Chuck had a team meeting, I think his first year, and the video he chose as the story to run, it, it, he hit home with me. It was something about like just choosing to be good. Like, mm-hmm. I like that. basically just choose yeah. to be great. Like whenever you're waking up in the morning, like choose to be great. Like basically like flip a switch. And uh, I'd never seen the video before or heard it laid out the way it was. And it was like, ah, I'll actually, I'll actually think about that. You know what I mean? Like I will actually, I like that. that'll change my mindset a little bit. I've never heard somebody just frame it like, hey, it's pretty easy here. Like just choose to be great here, you know? And I was like, this is a good video. With that being said, though, I have seen so many misses. Yeah. yeah. I've seen so many misses up there. But, like, the movies say that the coach's pump-up speech is great. And then when you're in there, you know, you flub a word, oh, it's over. Mm. The whole room just, whoa, yeah. so close. Or if it's not natural, or if it's a coach feels like, hey, I got to get the boys going. I got something good for them today. Like, if, it, if it's organic and it just hits them in the moment and they're speaking from the heart, that's great. Everyone's going to be juiced. But – yeah, if it's just if it's too planned, I think especially NFL athletes, professional athletes, we always say it's a very very tough room to speak to. Yes, but it just has to feel super real and authentic, and it, and it has to be quick too. It cannot I, be very long. I was going to reference what you just said, like tough room. 
the N an NFL locker room is a tough room. So in Hard Knocks, when they have somebody go in there and talk and they do well, like the guy at Detroit, the comedian in Detroit, yeah. mm -hmm. he went up there, he did well. It's like, I got mad respect for that guy because it is, that is a tough room. This mentalist that went into the yep. the Jets thing. Oh, O's. O's, oh. who's Shefty booked oh. the whole they thing. They call him O's for some reason. That's because it makes oh. everybody go, oh. 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 He's getting O faces okay. all over oh, the place. Shit. O O's is dropping O faces all over the place, but he goes in there and does well. There were some people like when I um, when I first got into this world of speaking into microphones, they were like, um, "Did you go to school for this, or how do you have the confidence for this?" It's like, ah, I was pretty good in an NFL locker room. If you're good in an NFL locker room, I think you're going to be pretty good anywhere. I think that's a pretty good rule, and I think we display that anytime we see a coach read something. We're like, that whole room just fucking he's gone right there. Mm -hmm. It is tough to speak to that many adults who are probably miserable at the time and are very confident, successful individuals themselves listening to you, got to prove yourself. And I think Salah has the room. I think everybody respects yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Darius Butler's first thing he said, though. You need a couple more episodes. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> that first episode. Is there five? They'll be you at five episodes? Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, five. Okay. And we, we love Hugh Jack, but Hard Knocks, I saw him do an interview. He said, I know I can win in this city. And I was like, yep, this guy's never going to win mm -hmm. in this city yeah. just because of what I just heard him say. Now, <laughs> like the whole team heard him just say that as well. It's like, no coach has ever says I, that is pretty successful. Normally it's a pretty big mm. we thing. Also, you know, yeah. you are completely defeated right now. Yeah, Maybe terrible. a little bit of that whole thing. And yeah, players right. like this guy, what well, is this guy's? <laughs> That's a shame though, too, because Hugh, I was with Hugh. He was the coordinator when I was in Cincinnati for my one year and, Hugh would always come bouncing in the morning, like always had a ton of juice. It would be 5.30. Like he got along with the dudes and he held everybody super accountable. Like he was – you couldn't mess around with Hugh. Don't ever come in late to a meeting, the offense, and they're walking through. Like it has to be perfect. And then you just – it's tough to be a head coach. It's tough to be a head coach for the Browns too, obviously. We yeah. loved Hugh when he yeah. came on yeah, the show. Yeah. He's cool. He's I, awesome. Everything I've – every interaction we've had with him, we love. But, I mean, that was pretty quick in the hard knocks when we knew that team was dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now he's selling booze. I guess he's coaching again. Now. He's got that tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he's coaching. I think he's the head coach at like Grambling. Yeah. One of those schools, right? Yeah. Head coach at Grambling. Head coach. Yeah. Eddie George still so. coaching yes. down there in he's, HBCU okay, as well? Sure. Yep. Tennessee so. State. Is he yeah, Tennessee State? He's Tennessee there. something? Bro. Yeah. He's at Grambling State. Yeah. Eddie. He George. is jacked. Eddie looks like he did when he played. Bigger, bro. Probably, right? Probably. I mean, yeah. He looks, yeah. He's a freak. Did you ever tackle him? No. I know now he was done, I believe, before I got in. That's one of those guys where oh. I think probably not great. How? How do you tackle him? Is the question. He's so big, he's so tall, so strong. Yeah, he just yeah, unbelievable. Him talking to Derrick Henry, probably the I didn't know Eddie George was as big as he is. So, so whenever that story came out that Eddie George talked to Derrick Henry and was like, Hey, this is the way you gotta run, and then Derrick Henry obviously yeah. mm -hmm. goes into King Henry mode or whatever. I'm like, oh, a running back talking to a running back. And then you like meet Eddie George. You're like, oh, this is the original Derrick Henry. Yeah, <laughs> this guy, huge son of a bitch. This guy was the uh, this guy was Derrick Henry pretty much back in the day. Just a little different style of football there. Listen, it's six three two forty. It's pretty big, pretty big boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's probably two sixty right now. <sighs> Just House. stropped. Yeah, stropped. Absolutely stropped. Properly stropped. Those players don't listen to him. He's like, yo, just a bunch of. I'll run through this. Put the pads on. <laughs> run through this whole. He should put the pads on for one day yeah. in practice. Can you imagine that? As a yeah, he went to Fork, he went to Fork Union. Ohio State got him out of Fork Union. Oh, okay. I wonder where where is he from originally? There, Philly. Philly. Yeah. yeah, he's a Philly guy. We had a couple military guys, uh, academy guys that ended up at West Virginia. Um, normally, a little bit more mature. Maybe there was a grades thing that started this entire thing. Maybe whatever the case was. That's a good – hey, that's a good story that Eddie George went on to become Eddie George out of the military academy there. That's good. Let's talk about that more. Oh, yeah. More. It might have been – he might. I don't know if he – like his college freshman year was like a prep prep year where he went to Fork Union or a senior year in high school he went there. I'm not sure how it worked. Oh, they were like, hey, we got a guy here who's – He's a man. Bigger, stronger, faster yeah. than everybody. I mean, can you imagine seeing that guy play high school football? He probably was a similar size. Speaking of big-time night for high school football, right? Mm -hmm. Huge. Huge. Good luck to all the – Good luck to all the boys out there. Go get them. Enjoy this. You're going to talk about this forever with your friends. You know, even mm -hmm. those of and you. And the season goes too fast. The high school season's over like end of October. Starts too early. Starts too early, yeah, I think. 
And probably it, does. You're right. Yeah. I, I think it, just as somebody who does not have a kid that's in it, has not been that close to it, has only followed for the last two years of high school football, I think it's wild how early it starts. Because I guess you got to do training camp before school starts. Yeah. Is what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. And they got They got schedules for basketball. You know, basketball tryouts. Everything starts right after. You got to get to the other sports. Got it. Well, thanks for the appetizer, high school football. Good luck out there. Thank you. Oh yeah. Connor, what are you giving? This goes in. What am I giving? Yeah. Oh man. You'll give a, a speech to the to the um, okay to the viewers to have a good weekend. Sure. Oh, yeah. ISO shot. Sure. That one up there. Yeah. Sure. He's going to come in slowly mm -hmm. while you're giving a pump-up speech sure. to send us into a great weekend. Sure. I want That's actual. Oh, yeah, gumption. Absolutely. Got to be serious. My left ear blew out, so I'm ready to do it. Like it hurts or? No, 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 hurt. like the earbud. And blew out of oh, it doesn't work. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how juiced you were. Exactly. You were sending juice back this way. Through it, yes. So that's what we need to feel. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. You're going to have to move Jabba. Oh. Bonus ball. Oh. oh. Fuck defense, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I want this speech so bad. Don't you? Oh, yeah. You kidding yeah, me? It's going to it's gonna be great. Yeah. It's going to be great. We kind of need it. Yeah, yeah, need it. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Do I start well when it's when it's out and then start zooming in? Um, is there a wireless a mic behind you? Oh, yeah. Work the floor. You got a handheld? Yeah. Yeah. Let's honestly. Yeah. That's Explore the, right the space, player. Con. Yeah, I think honestly, with the whole, I won't be able to hear anything. He won't be able to hear you, but he, we don't have to hear anybody else but you right, right. now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't thank you enough. Okay, for joining us all week and allowing us to do this for a living. We absolutely love our jobs and the fact that we get to do this is truly stupid and remarkable at the exact same time but we need to realize that that on this particular feel good friday we got a lot of football coming up we got two games tonight we got a bunch this weekend right. we got games on sunday right. and then we're back for overreaction monday oh, breaking yeah. it all down as we get closer and closer to the actual nfl kickoff we had a full off season with sports we certainly don't care about but that all comes to an end very soon and our friend our guy mm -hmm. Boston Connor has a message for you as we thrust into the greatest weekend of all time. You're the greatest humans on earth, and Connor wants to hammer that home. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you're watching. Ladies, gentlemen, everybody of all ages, Bill on his knees over there. You know, a lot of times on Friday, sometimes you might think like, oh, man, it's been such a long week. Mm -hmm. but it has been a long week, has it? It's been a great week. It has. Mm -hmm. And so, sure, sometimes great weeks can be long weeks, but you know what great weeks lead to? What's that? Great weekends. Exactly. Wow. We all have a tremendous opportunity yeah. not only to get better mm -hmm. as a human over this weekend, yeah. whether it be gambling Why? Why? or drinking Why? Why? or partying Why? Why? or dancing Why? or fucking. Why? You can do a, a ton of things on the weekend. Really, yeah. it's up to you. You know, I personally like to take a time to reflect on what this – great week has brought us all yeah okay you know there's been some great news this week i think we can all attest to that there's been some bad news this week but yeah. you know what we're gonna think about tonight when we go to bed what's that all the good news yeah because yeah. that's what matters yeah mm -hmm. at the end of the day now we have an opportunity yep to really be who we want to be yep. Yep. this weekend don't we hell yeah not only is there football, right. the sun's going to be out. Right. It's getting cold. Right. And that's why you need to you know, have some fun outdoors with your friends, your yeah. family, oh. whether it be your children, yeah. sure. whether it be me with homeless people, bums sure. outside. Yeah. I'll hang out with them. Mm -hmm. Bill yeah. will hang out mm -hmm. with the people that he'll capture. And yep. everyone back there will have a, just a fantastic time. I know AJ has massive plans. I don't know if he told you guys this no he never does he uh is actually hosting a party this weekend a so, kind of like a welcome home uh for kevin spacey and nice. he has been looking forward really? to it. okay yeah he has been looking forward to it since the verdict so uh you know this weekend it's going to be a, you're going to come to that not pack. just a weekend <laughs> it's, it's going to be a special <laughs> okay i'm talking a tom segura special not a machine special whoa i'm, I'm talking whoa tom segura okay <laughs> okay shots so let's yeah. you know let's Finish out this work day. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's say goodbye and hello to the ones we love. Yep. Yep. Every day. And let's have, let's have a hell of a weekend, boys. 
Hands it. Yes. Yeah. Team it's on man. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. All right. Well done. Didn't, I don't think you knew where you were going a lot of that. Nope. We didn't know where you were going with a lot of that, but I feel good. And Tom was the only yeah. one who clapped. I didn't think that was right. We all. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. Well done, Let's give this man a hug. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's give this man a hug. going to be pissed. That First going to be so pissed. There was no reason to take a shot at the machine in there. Uh, <laughs> no, no. It wasn't a shot. It was just, uh, I'm a Tom Segura guy. Okay. Well, hey, listen. You can be both. Respect to what you just did there. And mm -hmm. thank you for really putting perspective on our minds, too. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Say hello and say that you love your loved ones. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. <laughs> and goodbye. We love all of you yep. for allowing us to do this. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We'll see you on Monday. Goodbye.